What is up, my dogs? It's your boy, Mike Mason. Yeah, we're here for a really special show tonight. We have a super duper, amazingly special guest. It's me. I'm just fucking around. <laughs> um, yo, uh, I'm I really you were ex- say it was me. <laughs> uh, I'm really excited to uh, share what I'm going to share tonight. It's kind of this this thing that I've I've been turned on to. Uh, with Marini and this, uh, what I call hyper-realism, uh, where we're going to use a component uh, to, to make something that looks much more organic than could ever be done with just using a standard color. Uh, color. Excuse me. Um, and yeah, so I really wanted to share this. I think it's something that I just want to push out there and give everybody a chance to see. And uh, we'll do an iCane build, and that'll be an opportunity to kind of give you all a... Uh, a brush up on where my head's at with some of this stuff in 2022. Uh, we've done a couple of iCane demos before, but it's been a while. And yeah, so uh, I've spent some time editing this all together into a couple of uh, what I think is tight hours of, of good stuff. Uh, we've like a lot of it is sped through um, when I think it's repetitive and, you know, we're going to slow down at the moments that I think are important or that are differences in technique versus what I've shown in the past. So um, with me here tonight is uh, my lovely co-host, Carrie Strope. Hey there. How's it going? That was a long intro. Sorry to make you wait to say hi. Oh, Mike, please. (laughs) I've been over here waiting to talk about myself. Yeah, 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 you sure have. I mean, honestly, though, <laughs> tell us about what you're doing with the glass. I know right now you're slinging those candy heart dishes pretty that's hard. Is that right? right? That's right. It's 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 heart season, right? Yeah. So I got all my little candy hearts, right? Um, but I've been working on some other hearts, too, because I've been um, trying to come up with classes because everybody loved the snowflake classes this year. So wow. they all asked for more. So I tried to do some samples for some um, fused glass hearts that they could make. And those are filling up right now, too. So it's kind of exciting. Snowflakes to like heart bomb. Very good. Yes. Yo, and then homies, we are, this is something for Torch Talk group type dogs. Um, We are going to have like a contest uh, for new sayings for the candy heart dishes. And they're based on like the, the Valentine candy hearts, you know? So... Uh, if, if you can, if you guys have any fun ideas, like, uh, we, like Wanna Collab was a really good one. I thought uh, dank heat snuck in there. It might've even appeared course, on the dish, of course. but anything glassy, um, you know, I think we're going to have a little contest, uh, for ones that are kind of oriented towards glassy type dogs. So we'll do that in the group here soon. So we give you guys a little heads up, start thinking of funny stuff, maybe, uh, for candy heart dishes. Cause the best ones will get what you suggested on the dish and then we'll probably have some prizes and such uh, for everybody else who's keep you really honest liked. with those suggestions you have to want it <laughs> yeah and then um and then speaking of prizes yo i've got a few sticker packs sitting here uh that we'll give away after the show tonight we're gonna play some games Maybe we'll give away a prize for some, you know, I know some of y'all don't stick around for the games or don't have like a second device that you need because you need like to be watching on a TV and then have your phone as the controller. Like it's like that. You've got to have a second screen or a second tab. It's got to have two, two of it, baby. Um, anyways, and I'll throw in some Millie. We're going to make these some fun prizes. So yeah, that's up later. Um, yeah, but without further ado, like I said, I feel like I gave y'all the, the good intro. So uh, let's just jump into this. And my dogs, you know what we do. We take just a minute of our time at the beginning and the end uh, to shout out these companies that pitch in. Uh, This is all public. These companies pitch in 100 bucks a month and uh, the major ones, some of them pitch in 50. But it it all adds up to my ability uh, to like not hemorrhage my kids college fund or whatever. Uh, kind of thing in order to to do this thing that that I'm passionate about, which is you know providing this comprehensive coverage for our industry. Every now and then, like tonight, I sneak in a demo of my own, but a lot of what we're doing at this point is uh, providing this coverage to the industry and and getting to share really cool stuff and cool competitions and. Uh, all of these companies and events, uh, they're all pitching in uh, one way or another to help me fulfill this vision. And this isn't a big money business. Uh, it doesn't exactly add up to all of the expenses and especially all the time editing. But, you know, I love what I do and get to do. And I think it's a great thing. So it's like 
don't worry about that. It, but these companies really make it possible. Like it, it's just, it doesn't matter how much I love this. You know, I'm not some trust fund guy. I, uh, it, it, it takes a village or whatever to, <laughs> to make this possible. Anyways, uh, here we are, uh, in lovely Colorado Springs, uh, at Sid tech studios. Uh, it's currently where I'm working out of and, I keep an eye out that there, there might be classes and that sort of thing coming up. I don't know when or what. Uh, anyways, uh, so we've got like a punny here. I think it's like a 12 mil. And I just really quickly wanted to show you all cleaning that up, just rounding it on the Marver and patting the end in. Um, and then that's just to kind of give myself a really nice, clean, flush connection. Um, Because it just needs to survive this whole shaping process of the pupil. And, um, yeah, I know there's, there's some crazy rumors out there <laughs> that, that your boy <laughs> uses the, uh, import flat cane for my pupils, but I think y'all know that, that that isn't the deal, man. When I say that I use jet black or eclipse, I mean that no, there's no shame in my game. And, um, the shame is honestly on this other artist, Cheryl bot. I'm just going to call her out by name. It's, you know, I'm not trying to make Jerry Springer here, but, uh, what she's doing lying about uh, a competitor essentially and somebody doing similar work. That's disgusting. I, I really, this, I don't, I don't know what else to say. Like if lying about somebody like, you don't have to like me. I don't care if you don't like how I run that Facebook group, all that shit. But when you start lying about your com competition, you know what I mean? I don't mean to go all wharf on it, but I'm just like, she has no honor, but, you know, <laughs> kind of thing and uh honestly like that so that's the deal and i don't mean to get lost on that but i wanted to address that real quick because i've never used any kind of import color from my pupils i i don't think it would be an issue honestly like elbow does it in one of his webinars and um you know like if you know the batch is good kind of thing then i don't see the problem it's uh but I just I don't appreciate this accusation. I wanted to address that because, you know, here we are actually making a fucking pupil. And, Baby, uh, you're not you're not fooling every anybody. Everybody yeah, in chat know. knows that you pulled that flat and formed rods with it so that I you could make deal. it back into a pupil. <laughs> but anyways, let's get back to what's <laughs> happening here. Um, so as you guys could see, I'm just kind of gathering uh, this eclipse. And yo, Eclipse these days, some rods are nice, uh, some rods are bubbly. So like, I like to twist it up as I condense it back and kind of, if there is any air, it kind of gets mixed out and gives me a chance to like move those bubbles. Usually they just pop. If, if it's like, if bubbles are coming up that I can't pop just organically by twisting it up, that rod is fucked. I just set it down. That's only happened every so often. You know, it is what it is. Um... Anyways, so uh, I, I continuously gather that out and just push it back against that marver and repeat that that uh, movement. And this is just the really basic stuff, you know, so I didn't mind kind of Jerry Springering that up. But soon we're going to get into the more important <laughs> stuff where now, you know, we're really just trying to make a cylinder. Uh, now that right there, my hand is what's called uh, the parallel masher. It's made by a company called Philips. I don't think it's like the ones that make the TVs and shit, but whatever. Like, <laughs> okay. And now I've, so I've made this cylinder at the length that I want and I have established a lot of core heat. I build that heat up, you know, I get it hot and then round it on the Marver and then let that surface cool, you know, and the heat soaks in. I do that a few times. That motherfucker was floppy. Y'all could see that. And then it goes over. Uh, when I hit it in this parallel masher, it's like, it's important to not just do it on one side, you know, like it'll, it'll just start to kink, you know, flip it over, kind of move there. And you could do this, uh, with like any kind of masher. It doesn't have to be that, that I, I really like that tool, especially for rounding out cylinders, uh, for regular round ones. Cause like that thing, when I'm able to like apply that pressure, they just, they're perfectly round. And, um. In this case, it doesn't have to be that perfect, but you know, we want to start strong. In this case, it's to mash it though, and now we've got this really nice, nice flat shape, and that's just the start though. Like, um, this shape, uh, I mean, it would work like for an octopus eye, is which is what we're doing here. Um, but 
uh, I want the ratio, kind of the aspect ratio or whatever you want to call it. I want it to be uh, a bit of like a steeper rectangle. So uh, this is kind of like an additive sculpture process from here. It's very similar to how I've done like the dragon eye in the past. Like I start both of these the same way. The dragon eye, uh, if I want it to be more like the cat eye style, you know, like I'll add more on the sides, um, like the, the wide side or whatever. And then in this case, because it just I just want like this really nice rectangle, we're just going to add uh, stripes to the ends. A uh, shout out to my dog, uh, Tess the Glass, who just walked by. He actually owns this studio now. Uh, you'll get to see a little bit of it later. Uh, it used to be the Glass Grind, and shout out to the old owner, uh, Cody Ricketts, the homie. Um, and then she sold it and moved on, and uh, now he owns it. And yeah, he's he's the dog, man. We, it's, uh, it's nice, man. Uh, he's somebody I really consider a friend at this point. It's, good, it's been good to get to know him and, and uh, his wife as well. So big shout outs to them. Um, but yeah, so I'm now just striping black onto this side here. Give it a little, uh, you know, kind of tap that end in because I just want to, I just want this nice candy bar shape of glass, right? And um, and then I really just kind of, it's like cooking in a seal because it doesn't, you know, perfectly hit there. At this point, I'm just going to kind of work my way down it and, and let it all kind of cook in. Um, if I need to, after I've done this, like sometimes I'll go in with a stringer and kind of fill in any little gap. Um, this one kind of gets pushed around enough that, that, that isn't as necessary when I'm doing the dragon eyes that, that kind of is because I'm trying to like, um, make, you know, kind of steep, make it, make it a really steep angle at the edge there. And as I'm building up to that, it's just, you know, it doesn't want to flatten out that way. It leaves a little bit of a crevice. So. I like to cook it in though quite a bit um, in order that no, it's all about not trapping air essentially, you know? So I really want to go in and work that in really well. And, uh, and then I might go in with stringer if I need to. Okay. So guys, in order to not make this like a nine hour demo, um, I, I skipped the other side, but every single thing you're seeing, I repeated on the other side. So in this case, I added the like the stripe along the one side, cooked it all in, and then I did the same thing on the other side, and then I got it all really, really hot and hit it with that parallel masher again, just to kind of, uh, kind of keep that shape all in line. I'm, I'm just keeping that exact same profile, just widening it out on the sides by adding glass. And like I said, it's like a really like additive sculpture process. And here we go. So now I'm going to add a second layer. On, on each side and to achieve the, the exact amount that I want, you know, for this kind of octopusy looking eye. And, you know, this is totally like an artistic thing. You can do as much or as little of this, you know, as you want. I mean, you can buy that flat rod. It's kind of fat. Like it looks like a cigarette pack or something to me when I looked it up. Did you find I like, it? I found it. Yeah. Lampwork Supply does sell it. It does exist. So. Okay. All right. It's yeah, a thing. It's, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it doesn't, it looks like it would be hard to use for this. Um, and yeah, it's just, my concern, like, is just the batch variety is all, you know, sometimes the import stuff is really nice, you know, I'm not one of them dudes who's gonna openly hate it just because it's not, you know, from here, because sometimes it sucks, it's like, oftentimes it can be really good, and, you know, <laughs> it's like, not everybody's gonna admit it, but, like, some of those cats, especially proto guys, like, when they find a good batch of that china, like, they'll go back and buy as, as many cases of it as they can, because, you know, it, like, it, it's just, it's glass, man, and some of it they know how to make very well, especially the cobalt and that sort of thing. There's no shame in my game, I've used quite a bit of Chinese cobalt, and nothing against it, you know, like, it, it's one of those colors where, like, there's very few things, it's not like something new. They've been making it blue for a long time, you know, sort of thing. And, uh, anyways, yeah, it's, it would be a weird one for encasements though. Yeah. Peter in the chat mentioned Eric Goldschmidt, the homie, the corning dog. Um, and how about that stream that they did recently with uh, Hoobs and Coil and Rhino? That shit was incredible. 
Um, anyways, here's the same thing. I added the glass on the other side, cooked it all in really nicely, kind of squared it back out, and now I'm giving it another kind of love session here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was like a kind of sexy move there, you know? <laughs> giving it a stroke, as it were. And, um, and now, okay, now we're kind of doing like the final shaping moves here, right? And I want the edge to be really consistent the whole way. Um, the biggest piece of advice that I can give here is that when you're doing these shaping moves, uh, you if you're doing them against the marver, you absolutely have to do them on both sides. Uh, if you just do it on one, it, it just, I've never, for, I mean, maybe y'all are better at it than me, but for me it's like even though doing it from this side you know from the left is not as natural because you know i'm like right-handed or whatever um you really do need to repeat your movements like do the movement on one side heat it back up and do it on the other side and it just it always seems to like reinforce more evenness you know even if my dominant hand you know i think it's going to be more even by virtue of having more control i don't know for my money it's never worked out that way so yeah, I'm a big proponent of uh, yeah, hitting it from always both sides. Hitting it from both sides, y'all. <laughs> 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 As it were. Thank you, Carrie. Yes. This demo's heating up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Went from stroking, now we're hitting it to both sides. I almost got all Beavis and Butt Heady when you said something about tapping it early. Yeah. So, <laughs> and yeah, at this point, I'm just studying that edge and kind of making sure it's all really even and um, all in line. And then there was one move there. I wonder, did we miss it? I don't know. I'm struggling here. But at a certain point, I uh, added glass to the end after it was flattened. Hmm. But, oh, that's right. Never mind. Never mind. That's coming up. I'm sorry. I'm a little, I'm getting ahead of myself. Right. Um, here, we're going to add like the real handle that the build is going to be done on. And, um, to me, this is like mad, super critical. And that's why I really wanted to show y'all how I'm doing this. Uh, now there, I really heated the end of that and kind of squished it down on two sides to kind of help it just get a little closer to the shape that I want it to approach the, at, uh, the, the pupil in, right? If that makes sense. Because if you just glob it on around, I mean, you can work that in and out, don't get me wrong, but it's a lot easier if you kind of squish it and give it, you know, a little bit, uh, you know, something that's closer to what it's about to seal to, right? So when I first connected it, I kind of did give it still, though, a little bit of a globby glob each way or whatever, push each way kind of to connect just a little bit more. And now, um, uh, now I'm really working this seal good. Like th this is an th this is an incredibly important thing for this process. Like if if you do not take your time here, you know, like I'd rather lose a pupil. Like if this seal got weird, then like then proceed with it. Like is it, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. People handle cracks happen. Like, I also want to encourage y'all to not get scared of them, but. I just want to impress upon y'all how important it is that this seal here is done really well. Because it's just one of these areas of the most stress this thing's going to take, you know? So, that was how I did that. Like a shitload of heat. And then at the end, you know, I kind of gave it that pull out, you know? So it's like, uh, the whole angle is just flowing out of, of it really nicely. Okay, now after you've done all that work, uh, go... Be very careful. This is a moment where I've had pupils crack. Even though they're perfectly happy, it was just a thermal stress thing. I spent so long doing that nice seal and all that shit that, like, and then I rushed it back into the flame, you know, and then, like, the last, like, quarter of it popped off or cracked. So that that's one of those places where, um, where I'm really careful to, like, yeah, not crazy careful. I mean, you saw I put it like right into a rager flame, but I I didn't do it out. like I I went like out. You know what I mean? And like let it kind of chill out in the the fluffy zone. 
Okay, now here's what I was mentioning. Okay, so we got this nice handle on here, and um, and now it's like an easy opportunity to get a little bit of bonus length, is what I call it, right? Like, uh, like what do they call it? Uh, I don't know. It's kind of gross. They call it like the devil's inch, you know? Like, 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 <laughs> like dudes are like push in really hard, you get a little extra length or whatever. Is that like what? <laughs> Oh my god, I think I might have to Google this. Yeah, you gotta got the Urban Dictionary that one if you're Carrie. But uh <laughs> <laughs> This is like the devil's inch. <laughs> uh -huh. And uh inch or no, inch? Inch, <laughs> inch, the devil's inch. I know, I know. No, I'm just playing. But like uh essentially I was just like kind of very callously globbing a bunch of glass on because I've got this whole thing that's already set up so nicely. That it makes it super easy to just cook a little bit more in, right? Oh That's the, see, you got the devil's instinct. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yes, okay. Urban all right, all right. Me in. Okay, Carrie's up to speed now. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, I, I do this uh, with dragon eyes. I do this with almost every shape um, because once you've got, like, you know, five inches of uh <laughs> and once you've got whatever you've got there you know like i like to go the, is the length of my marver essentially anything more than that becomes troublesome so uh but once you've got that it's like so easy to just glob some glass on and just you know use the rest to to form its shape if that makes sense so yeah i i i find like it's just one of these little tricks i do sometimes you know with these pupils like they're really easy to shape if you shape them a little shorter and then it's really easy to add a little more you know using the rest as the guide so to speak so that's a bit of my theory oh there's my other shopmate yo avalanche glass man the homie wyatt a really nice young man um Dude, like, uh, and he's coming up, and, and he's just, and he's so young, it's crazy. Dude. I'll be fucking 42 this year, and then these young cats, man, they're just blowing it up. It's ridiculous, and they have so much life ahead of them, and I have so little. Oh, please. I'm just playing, but. <laughs> <laughs> man, Torch Talk got sadder every year. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing, but it's funny, man. It's 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 fun when uh, younger cats get into it. Like they they pick it up so fast, and you know, there's there it, it's a thing, you know. Like you can definitely teach an old dog new tricks or whatever. I didn't start doing this, you know. I, I started this about nine years ago or something, right? So I was like nearly thirty three, you know. All right, there we go. Look at that. That is some proper domestic flat cane, my dogs. You know, <laughs> so. God forbid your supplier is out of uh, the imports or whatever. Feel free to make it yourself. And, you know, I, I take time. Like, uh, we cut this down quite a bit by skipping, you know, duplicate parts and all that because it's symmetrical. Um, but this, seriously, it took about uh, 45 minutes uh, with, with everything already on the bench set up and ready to go to make this, so... You know, it just it takes time to glob a bunch into that really nice thing, and then all, all the steps after that. The dragon eyes take me an hour and a half, two hours. It take they can take a longer. Like I, I really take my time with those, and like I said, like stringering in each little crevice to help like build that out just exactly the way that I want. Um, and look at that. I mean that that like dare I say that is a nice piece of fucking flat cane. That's gorgeous. <laughs> thanks baby but yeah i i this i uh i've been doing this a minute and, and i really like everything to to uh be really proper you know i want if i show you one of those pictures of the of the thing lens you know like i want every cane to match that like there can't be some that has like some fucked up profile difference or the this or the that and and it's a lot easier to, to keep your build consistent if you're you know, your pupils consistent and all that. Okay. And at this point we're like, we're done. And now I'm just, uh, I'm absolutely making sure by checking like the, the side angle and the top angle, uh, that it's absolutely perfectly straight. Cause when, once you start striping it and all that, you know, you don't want there to be any kind of curvature or wonk or anything. And that's what we're talking about. That's what we're doing. So Hell All yeah. Right. That's, hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
pretty sure the dogs were making a flat cane comment. We we've, we've <laughs> yeah, we're all having a lot of fun with that flat cane. Like that lady, that lady fucked up because we're having a fucking blast with this whole thing. You know, it's it's a great joke. Anyways, okay, so now we're going to make um a component cane that is almost like an eye cane. Uh, except it just kind of starts on a small piece of whatever. If you, you, you can give every cane a little bit of UV accent if you start on a piece of UV cane. Something I did with that, uh, the first one I tried. Um, but anyways, we're doing the same thing here, just making sure we got a really nice connection. And now we're going to heat this bad boy up and we're just going to stripe the shit out of this thing. It's, um, it's a, it's so much less stressful than the eye cane builds. You know, where, like, it's really important to keep everything even and centered and it's like a zen exercise, you know? Whereas this is, like, some punk rock shit, you know? Like, I'm even fucking this cane up just so, like, every single piece doesn't look like it has a dot in the center. It doesn't matter. You're not really going to see it, but just, like, what the color idea was this of it not looking like that. Uh, this is some kind of striker. It looks like, um, like a double... I don't know. It's an amber purple or something like. It's striking hard, so it's got a. It looks like yeah, an amber purple or something. Maybe a double amber purple. I don't know. It's one of them batches that look really light though, so it's hard to tell. But if I could see like the starter, you know. But it's like one of them weird batches of a striker that starts all clear looking, you know. And you're like, damn, what right, is this? Yeah. They send me the right thing, and then you strike it, and it's like, oh no, it's amber purple. It just looks fucking clear. It's weird. Some of them are like that. All right, and oh, so over here on the side, guys, I've got, like, all these different striking colors, you know? They're, like, all all sorts of stuff I've used in various eye canes. It's one of the cool parts about this process is that you can totally use up those extra bits. Like, I often order, like, 1.75 pounds of color to do an eye cane. Don't get me wrong. Most of it disappears into the ends, you know what I mean? And I'll be lucky to get 200 grams of really pristine, air-free, gorgeous cane, uh, you know, to sell. But that that's about what it takes, you know. And, and but, but sometimes you get to the end and it's like, ah, it's not worth doing another round, you know, here. Or I might not make it all the way. So you end up with some extra canes of, of, of uh, strikers. And I just end up setting them aside or I, you know, mix them in when I get the same color. But um, in this case, yeah, I just like found a ton of those and I use them to make V's. And uh, it, it's it's uh, like I said, it's an awesome way to get rid of your extra stuff. <laughs> like, yes, this is awesome. And then when I'm, you know, like I said, this is kind of uh, an area of focus for me in 2022. Uh, I really like this. Um, in a certain sense, like, I believe the results of these, like, uh, they look super organic. Like, I think some, for some of my customers, like, or just general, like, whatever, I think some cats might not actually like these, you know? They'll be like, yeah, those look cool, but give me them ones that look like I'm on drugs. You know, there's like a psychedelic or like a really, uh, really cool uh, aspect to the ones that, you know, where every single cell has this, you know, fume border, you know, and these uh, beautiful colors and all that. But um, realize, I mean, they, they look cool. Don't get me wrong. And especially really small. And they look a lot cooler than, you know, like a dot stack or whatever you want to call it. Like, you know, like any other type of eye. Don't get me wrong. It, but it's like, they don't look like super real like they they can especially with the right color and like i guess the smaller they get all that all that stuff kind of becomes less of a factor but like i said like the um you look at if you can go to my instagram for example and see a lot of these eyes that i make i mean i think they look fucking awesome but like they're 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 almost like psychedelic like compared to what we're doing here and um I, I really like that. I feel like it's a road that nobody's really quite gone down like this. You know, um, you know, there's some cats are like mixed colors, like Mylan Townsend and things like that. But like um, this approach of making a component and then making an eye with that component, like you kind of got to know what the fuck you're doing, you know, because you got to make a million, like pull it down to a bunch of nice even cane and then stripe with it and all that. But like, 
you know, once you get a little bit down the road with the my canes, and it's like that's where most people start. It's not like rocket science, you know. Most everybody kind of you can make an eye cane. And I thought this was a little long, so I just nipped that off right there. I was like, all right, all right, this is too damn long. But so I just nipped a little off before I was like wasting a bunch of color, you know. I was like, all right, now's a good time. So change your size there if you want. Um. Anyways, yeah, I really like the idea of uh, th this method, and it's one of the reasons I wanted to share it. It's super powerful. Um, you're about to see me do the like, uh, like, like Phil Collins Tarzan soundtrack of uh, hyper realism demos here because I do like an absolutely massive component. Uh, you don't have to do it as big as in this demo. I think you could go like, like. I just, you try it try whatever you know what i mean like try thicker stripes try thinner stripes try mixing fuck you know whatever in there like there's all kinds of possibilities here um this is just kind of the core idea is you know stripe the shit out of something and and um pull it down and then make a real eye with it you know and the look that is possible with this, I think there's some other possibilities that could be more psychedelic, like I was mentioning, you know, like a smaller component or one where like colors are arranged in a pattern of a specific thing, you know, and then pulled down and then you make the eye with that. It's like. You could be getting all Frankini with it here, right? Yeah, you, you could do all kinds of things, you know, it's uh, there's a lot of possibilities. So I just wanted to share like the core technique. Look at the size of that thing. But, yeah, well, th it's already getting big, but this would probably be like a good stopping point, like for a basic one. You know, uh, the the first ones that I did were uh, like the components were a bit smaller, and like I'll be real, like at a certain point, you're like it's like almost self defeating because uh, as the cane gets pulled smaller and smaller, it's like you know you get to the point where you're gonna need a fucking microscope to see that shit you know so you know it's not like self-defeating it still looks amazing and super organic um but something is lost if you go too deep so the, you know there's a ton of room to play all right everybody's talking about the outfit yeah, yeah. okay so like <laughs> Yeah, um, whale s sells all of this actually whale apparatus and like that face shield, you guys. I cannot recommend that enough. It's like one of the best investments I've ever made. Um, it's not uncomfortable at all. It's like easy to flip up, you know, and like pause for a dab or a drink, you know, whatever it is. Um, I really like that. And then um, the aluminized jacket. Actually, I didn't get that from whale. I'm sorry. It it's the face shield I got from whale. My aluminized apron and my aluminized sleeves I did get from Whale. You could get one of these jackets from Whale, but check this out, dogs. Uh, definitely check eBay for this stuff. Uh, it turns out that, like, firefighters and all sorts of, like, there's all kinds of motherfucking people who use these jackets. Besides glass blowers, and then, like, sometimes they don't even use them. They just end up selling. Like, I found mine... I forget what I paid, but it was like at least half half off versus what I would have paid through Whale. Um, I do recommend Whale for the face shield, though. Like they've got like the, you can buy the shield on Amazon, but it's like hard to find the exact right um, headgear that matches it. Like Whale has the right one for glass blowers. Just just trust me on that. Just get the shield. Um, I will say my shield is um, the one that just has the gold. It doesn't have any uh, shade. You can get it with a shade. You can also get it with like a didymium type of thing or something, like a plastic. Uh, but I prefer to wear my glasses under it. So it's like, you know, that's up to y'all. But I really like uh, mine because, you know, it doesn't add any shade or anything. I can wear it for virtually anything. And I can, and because it's like kind of doing the bulk of uh, the, the lifting, you know, in terms of like reflecting harmful rays and such, you know, like I can use my shade threes for virtually everything, you know, like them super bright flaring things, you know, I'm squinting and all that, but like, I know the shield is kind of reflecting a lot of it. 
Um, at a certain point there, I just sealed up to the end, and and you saw me do like this handle condensing move, where like I I condensed some of that, and then rolled it in the marver to kind of round it back out, almost like there was a bigger piece of rod. I like that move a lot. Like, that that's that that's a big one for me these days. And yeah, now this bad boy is out. Like I said, like I didn't have to go this hard, but I did it for y'all. And uh, like this is a, you definitely don't have to go this big, so don't don't feel like you have to, like, to try this methodology. It might even be cooler to do like four smaller pulls that would have equaled about the same amount of you know prep uh, for the cane that you know than just one giant pull so it all matches, you know. Um, when it all matches, it just has this like hypercellular look. That that that's what I'm exploring right now. But one thing on my to-do list is absolutely to try different ones um, with the same colors. To try ones with like like totally different batches of cellular ones, you know, pulled down and then mixed and matched, much the way I did for this one. Like, Okay, somebody in the chat, like, I love you, dog, but this is nothing compared to what Marcel does. Marcel's <laughs> puck is like, this is, yeah, this is soda can size. Marcel has, like, I don't know what the fuck, like, like Marcel's things are fucking diesel. Like, yeah, yeah, not the Millie, but, you know. <laughs> They're asking if it came with a girth certificate in the chat. <laughs> oh, I didn't see that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> might have might have one of those on the shelf, but you know. taking it back to V Day here. Yeah, and I do like how the shield gives you guys like a totally different angle. If you guys could just look at that or whatever. <laughs> yeah, Peter in the chat mentioned they pulled that Starry Night 2.0. I was clicking through like the whole series of pictures that Jessica posted. It was so dope. Nice. And, um, yeah, I've actually got a shitload of footage from when the time that I was out there after the DFO back in like 2019, I think. And yeah, we have a lot of starship action to share. Um, I'd really like to have Marcel and or Jessica with us, uh, when we run some of this stuff. If y'all haven't noticed, man, we're really, uh, we're kind of back in the groove here. Um, you know, it took a minute to get settled and kind of, I get to the point, you know, where we could be doing shows every week. Uh, when events pick back up, you know, there might be some weeks where we won't, but I'd actually like to have some shit, you know, like in the can to premiere. But regardless, um, yeah, we're really, you know, we're kind of in the groove here now. And uh, that's one thing I'd really would like to have uh, to get done is to get some of that. Get It's, that, it's like those builds are so crazy it's a lot of it's a lot to edit essentially you know there's so many things and all going on shit hanun's in the chat the homie man mm -hmm. helps us with the with the torch talk community and he's a good friend and yeah if y'all saw like he, he was one of the people in the pictures helping fucking build that thing it's so cool that you're out there at the starship homie getting to do crazy shit tt admin mike the gold panner my dog yeah mike moore my homie right on yeah thank you for helping with this community man i don't know if it's like the time to talk about this because i wanted to talk to y'all about it first but i have to be real like it, it it's it it bleeds into what i was just talking about um this focus on the channel here and all this amazing stuff that we have to share I really think that this Facebook thing has become a bit of a, um, you know, it, it's just a massive distraction. And, you know, like when we started this channel and when that group started, you know, like it was just supposed to be this little fan club for the dogs. And, um, and I feel now like it's a big fan club. Yeah. For it, it, everybody. It's like everybody showed up and we've accomplished a lot in, uh, providing the community with a really chill spot, you know, that I, that I believe is, you know, open to everyone of all skill levels and backgrounds and, you know, something that's very needed. And I think it's time to, to let some of my dogs, you know, like, like Mike in the chat, then, um, 
you know, kind of let you guys do what you've been doing. Take the training wheels off and kind of let me focus on this channel and keeping these these dank shows coming every week, you know, because we have something real special here. It's a it's such a beautiful thing that so many of you guys are here with us, you know, taking your time and making it possible to do something special for our whole industry. So I'm not trying to fuck around with that. And um yeah, then in a certain way, like I said, that just the Facebook itself is just becoming harder and harder to manage and even just the amount of my time required for really silly stuff. It's not even the bigger picture stuff that gets me down, you know, or the you know, the people who don't like the way we run the community. That that that's that's just, you know, part of what comes you know, with showing the rudest people the door, you know. <laughs> It is what it is. I don't even. They're not bad people. It's just some of them, some cats get too wild on Facebook. Anyways, yeah, it's all a massive distraction, and it's not even that though. It's it's just the rigmarole of making sure this place is awesome, you know. And then, Mike, like, do it, you get paid to do Torch Talk Facebook? Yeah, not at all. The Facebook. Oh yeah, that's totally right. Free, so yeah, it's not about exactly. that though. No, I, I know, but you like, shouldn't. You know, you shouldn't have you know. to spend a full time job managing a group. You know. Yeah, no, but you know, I've got this team of amazing people who I think are pretty goddamn ready to to handle that type of stuff. You know, it's just yeah. it's just been me, man. Just too too afraid to take my hand off the wheel or whatever. Anyways, let's get back to the glass. Um, so we built this bad boy out. We put a shitload of heat into it and we rounded it out. And now we're putting on it what's called the moil. Uh, it's just like excess glass. And, you know, I often use um, scraps handles for this. Like once a handle gets too small, right into the uh, box that I use for moils, you know. And uh, and essentially at this point, I'm just treating it like any uh, milli build that I would do, you know. Um we went ahead and skipped, you know, we added a moil to the other side. Um, when you're adding these moils and stuff, always go back and keep some heat in the build. Uh, you're going to want to be adding them like after you've rounded it out and such, you know, so it's usually got a shitload of core heat at that point and you can kind of do the moils without worrying about it. But the moils pretty well keep the handles warmed up. Generally. But, you know, you want to, you want to, you just don't ever want to forget about them, you know? And we're giving this thing, like, a final rounding here. And I kind of like this move. Like, a lot of this, like, it looks like I'm pushing on it, but I'm not really pushing hard. I'm mostly letting its own weight round it out. And that is really critical. Um, especially, like, the round eyes and stuff. Like, if they get a little weird, like, it's crazy what you can do, you know, with a bit of rounding. You don't want to have to do that, but, you know, sometimes you find yourself in a bit of a spot. And, um, in any event, yeah, all right, and so now we've got a second handle on there. And I like to just kind of extend those moils out, and then when I add that handle, sometimes I just kind of push that little ledge there, and that kind of helps helps keep some heat uh, from splashing right directly onto the handle, you know? It just like gets a bleed heat. Um, I think I left in a moment. Like there's another trick that I do on these handle connections, because, man, you know, it's like the smaller the handle, the easier, right? Like the, that's just in general sort of thing, and, and like more rotations you get, like a gearing sort of vibe or whatever, right? So, I like to use these like as small a handle as I can. And what does sometimes happen is, like, it starts to get pretty fucking hot, even through that moil. So, uh, I think you'll see me do it at a certain point. Um, I'll grab my hand torch, and I'll just have it cranking oxygen. And I'll take a moment and just kind of blast that connection area. Like, it's this, a lot of what you see me doing, like, I call it buh. I, I totally stole it from Mattis Cookie, who totally stole it from Boyd Suguki. And it's called Build Up Heat. And you, I know you guys have heard me talk about it. Um, it's the notion of repeatedly flashing a piece uh, and kind of letting heat soak in before you actually do anything. 
Like right now, I'm not actually going to pull this or anything. I'm just kind of coming out, letting heat soak in. I'm rotating it around, letting the heat move around that shit. And, um, and when you've built the heat up this way, you get this truly deeply even core heat. And that's what I call the dank heat. I know a lot of y'all like have heard this term before and such, and it, it's like, it's in a sense another term for core heat, but it it in, to me it implies the building up heat thing. You know what I mean? Like if you say dank heat, it means you've got that core heat, but you got it by building it up, so it's even as fuck. It just doesn't mean that heat, you know, because you can have core heat, but the surface could be way too hot. You know what I mean? Just because just you've got core heat doesn't mean it's even. Even heat and even movement is um, the ideal. Okay, now I want to talk about what I'm really aiming for here, guys. Uh, because, like, w these builds that I do, like, I've got subscriber homies. And then I, you know, just in general, the bigger you go, the more stripes you can get in. So it's like a resolution thing. You know, the eyes, man, they just look cool as fuck when you get a shitload of layers in them, right? So I, I always want to go big. Um, and at the end, that means that, like, the diameter is much more than I can pull, you know? And, like, you actually saw this if you guys saw the pictures of the Starry Night, you know, the Marcel thing. Like, that big-ass square. Like, that's you can't really pull that. So, you know, like, I've seen Marcel do this with these big round ones, you know? Like, he continuously mashes them down and rounds them down so that the diameter uh, decreases. You know, it gets longer, but the diameter de decreases. We're actually doing something really similar here. Um, I like to pull these things down a good bit right out the gate um, because it makes it so much easier to manage. Um, it leads to this one pull right here that's really tough because like I've got, you know, like the, the longer it gets and all this weight, it's like really fucking hard to deal with. And here I'm building up heat again, even though it's got a shitload of core heat and everything still. It's like I'm not going to pull it right away, even though it's it, it was ready to go. But it like I call that the fool's pull. Like when you come out, you know, and like it's starting to feel loose, you know, and you think it's ready to go and like your instinct is to do it because you don't want to risk it getting fucked up, you know, because it's getting loose. Like I call that the fool's pull. You let it settle down. Go back in one more time, you know, like fight the good fight. You know, you'll get better at handling that loopy ass shit. And then if from there it's a timing and like, you know, kind of like holding against gravity and shit. And then once it gets to this point where the, the middle is cooled enough and I'm blowing on the cane and such, then I can kind of give it some more juice. And it, it's like a timing and a finesse and a feel thing, so it just takes some time. But like that, I, I just, I left this in so you guys could really see the timing. Um, I'm, I, I've left in this part here because I want y'all to see what I do next. And I do this for all my pulls pretty much, you know, like I, I, I get them down to a much more workable diameter and then separate them into two, and then I separate the ends. And depending on the overall size, you know, I'll, I'll usually then have, like, like two big fatties, you know, to pull or whatever. So it's like, it's almost like a four-pull kind of thing. And then from there, like, the two fatties might leave, like, two little two little chunky boys, you know, and so I'll have four <laughs> chunky boys from there. Usually I can get the four chunky boys, and that's it, you know? And, I love uh, all these technical terms. I'm, yeah, my notebook's yeah. full tonight. Yeah. <laughs> and the devil's inch to four fatties, but you know. <laughs> yeah, man. Where I, I, you know, I was mentioning. It's like I, I don't, I don't know what, if I want to actually call it torch talk because what we've been doing when we have guests and everything is fireside chat, and uh, you know we just want, I just wanted some separation from from that. You know, it's a different format and a different time. Mm-hmm. And, um, but I kind of wanted to go back to this notion of a little more loose show, you know, and, uh, tonight wasn't the night, you know, it, it, but like, it's like, I'd like to get more of like a party crew going some of like the old homies, you know, who, who were with us, um, some homies who have joined us in the past, like as artists, 
uh, with their demos. Like some of them, I know they'd be happy to join us just to chat and bullshit over. And, you know, and like, I want to do that format too. Like I, I want to keep it a little more serious when we're sharing this footage that I have this tremendous honor of um, going out and capturing and with the blessing of the artists and the blessing of these events, like, it really is a magical thing that we're getting to do here. And uh, I want to show that the proper respect, you know, of, of not, you know, maybe getting as loose as we can, you know, even though that that's very fun. But <laughs> this is my demo dogs. Like it's time to get loose. So, like, yeah, like, I'm trying to get crazy bear, but you know, well, we have a lot of fun, and I really, I, I it's, it, it's just been a real pleasure with you guys over these years, you know, getting together all the time, and you know, I'm so glad we're kind of back in this fucking groove. Like, I'm so stoked to be able to share something from the new studio where I've been working. It, it, it's just, it, 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 you know, like a lot of things have to align uh, for me to actually, you know, bring the camera in here and get it set up to actually capture demos like this and knock out all these question marks of, of all, all these details and now that we've done that like i i really look forward to kind of spicing things up with some of my own stuff that i'm happy to share with you guys because yeah there's a lot to do and a lot to share and a lot that i would like to share that i haven't even had the opportunity yet so okay anyways guys here is the same thing i've been talking about this building up the heat and you just can't do that by just raging on it, especially a build this big. It, it, it's like time is a factor. So like as much as like a lot of this, I sped through, you know, repetitive striping and bullshit like that. Like I want some of these, some of these segments I want you all to see. Okay. And you know, there I cranked the torch a little more. Um, I will say this. Uh, until there is core heat, I'm a bit more gentle. I've found that like, uh, certain builds, especially like, like the surface is just a little more sensitive. Uh, once it, it's almost like a, like a cadmium color, you know, like you can rage on it once it's core heat, but if you rage on it too soon, you know, it doesn't like that. So I'll often, um, my my trick or whatever like i'll often set the torch up the way i want it with the triple mix but then i'll turn the triple mix off so i'll kind of start putting the heat in uh, with the triple mix off and then i'll just crank the triple mix back to where and like i already know it's set up kind of the way i want it you know with the just the right crank of the triple mix and that way i don't have to do much you know it's just like a really quick move so I don't, you know, like I'm just trying to mitigate movements and be able to stay in the zone. So, yeah, um, yeah, everybody, everybody in the chat seems to really like the, the the jacket. I'm telling you, the Illuminized jacket is also one of the best things I ever bought. But really, guys, um, and, and, all right, and I will say, like, what happens is if I don't have uh this jacket, it's like I've got Illuminized sleeves, I've got an Illuminized apron. But, like, this area right on my shoulder, uh, like, that area, like, my chest and my shoulder gets just fucking roasted. And, um, like, the jacket solves that. And then the thing is, though, is that these builds are so fucking hot. Um, I don't know if I hooked it up this time. Well, you might just not be seeing the hoses. But if you look in the corner there, there's this little cooler. You can see the CO on it or whatever. That's my cool shirt. And what I'm actually wearing under this is a water-cooled shirt. And it's got hoses uh, that recirculate water from the cooler uh, into the shirt. And it's got the shirt has a series of hoses that go all around my fucking shirt, like from the back and the front. And that allows me to wear this full aluminized jacket uh, and not be fucking melting underneath it. And Hanun, I know you guys don't have one of these. Like, you must know what I mean about, like, melting in that fucking thing. Like, and anyways, this is the shop I thought you guys might like to see because you've just been seeing one angle this whole time. We got a pimp-ass sandblaster, cold working area. When that door is open, guys, there's a sick-ass view of the mountains in Colorado Springs. It faces west or whatever out the back. 
And yeah, it used to be the glass grind owned by Cody Ricketts. Uh, this is the component we made. It almost looks like an eye cane. It's crazy. Wow. It has all this detail, and it's all just going to go away when you stripe it. But what's important is that there's like an impossible level of detail like captured, you know, like it, it's nuts. Uh, Evil Betty asks what the price on that is. Um, you know, I'm going to pull up my email right now and see if I can find it. Like I bought it from eBay and uh... alright, I think we're going to get it. Alright, it's a Careware Illuminized Jacket. Yo, I got this shit for $107.25, yo. Like, these things are two or $300 on, on like, most sites. So definitely um, search eBay for this type of gear because, you know, it's one of those things like, like, um, like weed growing and glass blowing and shit like that. Like, these niche industries, they, you know, there's always, like, an upcharge. All right, now here, guys, I'm going to share a little trick I've been doing. Like, you remember, like, in the advanced iCane demo where we, like, rolled the pupil and frit and all that to get this, like, uh, like, the second eyelid or whatever they have, you know? Like, they, it has this really natural look. Well, here's a way to get, like, 75% of that effect with, like, 1% of the work. <laughs> fume that shit like so, and like yo you can see it um in that recent pull that i did with the cherry wood strike like on the side of the pupil there's this straight up like gorgeous crisp clear fucking white line man and it looks great it really does and like i all, all i did was fume it you know <laughs> like giving away some secrets here but <laughs> I'm not saying this will show up in every pull, but in a lot of them it will. It kind of depends on the color. And, um, yeah. Now, some cats, and I'll like, I'll take a moment to shout out uh, Salt, man, the homie Luke and yo. Um, his webinar, he did this technique where he made a component for the eye cane. And, like, he even sliced it in half and doubled it up, you know, to get, like, more detail and, like, that really inspired this and the look is very different like i took it to a totally different uh place but that's kind of what inspired me and then you know uh, he also talks about using like a different color on the inside of the eye and like it's to set off the the shape if there's if the color outside is darker this is doing the exact same effect. It might not be as cool, but like I said, it's it's like super quick and super easy. So, you know, kind of thing. And um, I, I don't think this build, I, I don't want to mix these techs. Like, I really think this organic cane that we've made looks fucking incredible. So I don't want to muck that up with this old school frit rolling shit. No, 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 no. We're not mixing <laughs> the, you know, we're not crossing those streams or whatever. Oh, so. God. <laughs> <laughs> I do know that reference. Yeah. All right. Now, uh, <laughs> here's something else, guys. Like, all right. I ju I've just got set up at the new studio. I actually do have my computer there. I've got my clamped fucking second camera. So, like, some of y'all might remember when I had this uh, studio at the house back in Virginia. I had, like, the over-the-shoulder camera as well. Sorry. I don't have that set up yet. It, it, it actually, like I said, it's been quite a journey to get to the point where I could film something like this and share it with you guys. Anyways, um, okay, so uh, what I do for any of these canes, man, like if I've got any batch of color, I mean, if you're lucky, the, all the rods are identical, but like, eh, it doesn't really happen most of the time. Um, so I always uh, organize the rods from smallest to largest. And as I'm going around, I want a small rod to start because I want to be able to use a small flame so I don't disturb the pupil, so to speak, you know? It's one of the reasons I like that eclipse for my pupils. Um, it's really, it's like a stiff black. It's, uh, it, it resists, you know, the, the whatever, like, rods you're putting against it or whatever, so. Um, and yeah, now another thing you'll notice is that I'm not going all the way to the bottom. Um, I want to talk about this because like with a shaped pupil like this, this, the dragon eyes, um, and, and you've got a choice, you know, like you can either have your handle go all the way to the base, 
you know, and like out to a certain point, you'll kind of be able to see it and keep track. Um, or you can leave a good bit of it exposed and like it's it at a certain point, like it's too small for the build, you know, and like it's an awkward type of connection into your handle. So you're like odds of random handle cracks like go up. But if you leave that extra space, you know, and like kind of uh, deal with the the possible consequences, that's really going to let you see uh, where you're at because, you know, like, all right, like I'll tell you all what we're going to do next. We're going to stripe this out all the way around once, and then we're going to stripe it all the way around twice. I think in the past I used to do like three, and then I would start building the shape out. I like two now. Fuck that three shit. Um, two why, is why is that? Yeah. All right, two layers is plenty of protection for the pupil. Like that's my main concern is not distorting the pupil and such, right? Okay. But like two layers is plenty, and um, the quicker you get it rounded out, like the less chance of it going off center and such. So like, yeah, what we're doing here is we're going all the way around once, all the way around twice, and then I'm going to switch to the sides and I'm going to start like one layer that goes mostly all the way out of the sides and then another layer that goes in between the stripes on those and then another layer and then another layer and then it's going to be almost rounded out. And then at that point I'm going to start rounding it out again and going all the way around again and then... I'm going to really want to be able to look at the bottom and see because like, it's like, uh, I mean, like I'm, I'm, like, I'm not trying to brag. Like I'm not the best at this, like, but I'm not, I'm not bad at it. You know, like I, I'm pretty fucking robotic with this striping and it still just gets a little bit off, you know, from the top to the bottom. And if you can't see the bottom really clearly, you're not going to be able to fix that. And I even left the stripes in at a certain point as I'm approaching that, like, rounding out point. Like, I'm assessing it, you know? Like, I'm looking at the front, and then I'm looking at the back. And, like, you can almost always find some area that's, like, just shifted off a little bit. And so, like, you're going to want to do, like, a really thin stripe towards the top and then thicken it up towards the bottom where it's, like, you know, where it's missing some mass. And... Like I said, man, like if you don't have this extra bit of people at the bottom, it's not happening. And like at the top, I, I barely need any extra. I need a little bit of extra there. Don't go all the way to the top. Don't ever go over the top. Ever. But you don't have to leave this extra space. But at the base, it just gets a little messy, you know what I mean? Like you you need like – it's not much. It's just you can see it though. Like there's a there's a good bit of extra people hanging out there. And that is allowing me to really see where I'm at. Okay, and then the point at which you can remove that, and I'm literally going to remove it. You're going to see this. Like, I'm going to, like, get a quick little punny on the top, and I'm actually going to heat that shit up and slice it off with scissors. Like, because I just don't need it in the way. But I don't want to do that until it's actually, like, essentially in a round shape. And then I'll go through, you know, and, like, use the rest of my rods, you know, once it's mostly rounded out, right? But if you do that any sooner, I'm just telling you, man, like, you're, you're going to trash a 30 or pull or more because the back end is going to come a little off center. All right. And then, like, for me, that's a that's a dead end, man. Like, I'm sorry. I'm too far down this road. Like, I'm never going to show or sell cane that's off center. Um. You know, a lot of my pulls have some, you know, like they'll be like that last little bit towards the end, you know, that's just like, you know, like sometimes like some, it, it just, especially before I started leaving this excess, you know, that always be a little bit, man. I got a box full of shit like that and it's awesome cane, but it's like, it's, and some of it, like I'll show it to people and they'll laugh. They're like, what the fuck are you talking about? This cane's perfect. And it's like, no, 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 no. You know, it's one of those things where, like, you've done it enough and you get better at seeing the flaws. And that's where I'm at with it. And, like, don't get me wrong. I'll use it for, like, a proto stuff someday. Don't like, don't get me wrong. I'm not going to trash it or anything if it's good cane. But, like, I don't, I don't want to sell anything like that. And, like, it makes me cringe when I see other people sell that shit because, you know, especially if they, you know, like, especially if the price is high. It's like, oh my god, you gotta be joking me selling this wonky-ass off-center-ass bullshit. 
for more like it is what it is so um for me that that's a thing and yeah leaving that extra bit and really keeping track of it through every step of the build until it gets to the point where i'm really rounding it out yeah, that's that's really key so like I said, it makes it harder to deal with. You're going to probably get more handle cracks and little stuff like that. But, you know, the thing to, to, to realize is that, like, handle cracks are inevitable in marini making. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, a lot of builds, I don't ever have one. But, you know, a lot of times, man, you accidentally go a little too low on one of them reheats or whatever it'll be. And then you get that. And then it's no big deal, though. You just want to have, like, a nice 8 mil or a 9 or a 12 or whatever as the build gets bigger to just kind of almost cold seal on the front. If it's got, got more weight, you know, give it, like, you know, make, you don't want to do a fully hot seal. But, you know, the hotter the, the – the more weight, the hotter the seal. Just get a handle on there and then just go down and fix that shit. It's not that deep, you know. As long as you're not, like, knocking it around and stuff like that, it'll stay on the other handle temporarily kind of vibe so that's just one of those things like handle cracks anticipate them don't freak out about them <laughs> just finish your stripe or whatever it is or even your row of stripes if you're getting you know if you've got got you know if you only got like two stripes left and the crack don't look bad you know like you can kind of weigh it out you're like well i'm not putting much weight on this right now it'll definitely make it go ahead finish your row you see All the right. question about going diagonal and not all right, what's this how, now? How do you not go diagonal? How do, how do I not go diagonal? I mean, sometimes you do end up going a little diagonal just almost inadvertently, you know? And, like, um, what I do is, like, I essentially, like, I see that shit. I'm like, oh, man, okay, that's stripe. But we're getting a little bit of an angle going here. So at that point, on the next angle, I'm kind of adjusting the next stripe. And I do that by adjusting the angle of the rod itself, you know? So, like, I'll kind of start really steep. So I get this really thin at the top, you know? And, like, usually for me, it's always going, um, it's always going back, like, to the left or whatever, right? So it's like, I always end up having to start thin at the top. And then I just kind of adjust the angle of the rod down and the speed, you know, so that I'm laying the right amount of glass. And just kind of bring that down to more level as I go. Or even a downward angle if I've really got to lay a lot. And that way I can kind of lay an angle that corrects and gets me back to a straight line. So, yeah. And a lot of that is just watching as you go and being really cognizant of it. Um, uh, some of it is like you're helping yourself because like I, I think Elbow called it uh, mowing the lawn or something like that. I don't think it's a perfect analogy, but whatever. <laughs> because when you mow the lawn, you go to the edge of the previous stripe. But what Elbow was talking about was like going between stripes. So and that makes sense, though. You know what I mean? You don't ever just want to like stripe on stripe on stripe. You always want to like right. go in between the two stripes and kind of set up that alternating angle. So, like, once you've got a set of good stripes, it's like then you're going in between them on the next row. So you're, help, you're like, guiding yourself a little bit. Um, the other thing that I do, like, you know, like when I was building the pupil, for example, when I'm uh, adding the extra black uh, to the edge of the squared out pupil, um, what I'll often do is, like, those will often come off center. Like I'll, it'll start right and I'll be looking at it. It looks really good, but then it'll just lean a little to one side as I go to the bottom or whatever. Right. And that's really problematic though, because I'm trying to add glass to it, you know, and especially with the dragon eyes, I'm trying to make this nice little taper. Right. And then if it's fucked up on one part, like it just doesn't look right. And then it's a lot of material to push around. So like, it's really, really, really good if that goes on evenly. Right. It's, it's it just you end up having to add too much to the other side and then there's more material on one side than the other right like there's all these opportunities for it to become uneven when you when that happens so um yeah like uh yeah a, like a lot of that um you really just need to avoid that <laughs> by all means you know if you went crooked on one of them and you could you like like give yourself a space put another straight line and then go in and back and fill in between the two is well all right i think that what, help? what i wanted to get at there um 
what I do is like I adjust my angle down. Okay, so like there's there's like this mathematically perfect angle for doing the striping, right? Where like the build is in the exact place where like it's getting the brush of heat from the flame, you know, so it's like hot and happy. And but the rod is getting the heat going up it, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's like there's like this zen and like that's where you're gonna be like almost all the time that you're striping in a milli, right? But in those moments, what I've found, and it's like hard to do almost because you've be, you know you become like a striping robot. But what I do is like I go to a less ideal angle. Like it it's it kind of sucks actually. It's like harder to lay the same amount of glass. But I go to like a like a flatter angle on the um on the pupil itself, so that I can see down the line better. Like it's a much more like like it's usually much more steep when I'm striping. But it's almost flat when I'm trying to lay that extra glass on the side, and that way I can really look down that motherfucker and like that that it really helps me not go off the side. That you don't really want to do when you're like striping a build, you know, because it's not ideal. But like when you're making the pupil and stuff, it's really important. And like you kind of got to like make your choice there, you know, like is it better to like lay the glass the way I'm used to or is it better to actually really get a, a bird's eye view down it? And it's, you know, it's harder to see that glass and like nail it. But, you know, I kind of like switch that angle when I'm about halfway down, you know. Because, like, I'm really good for about the first half, and then the, the 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 chance of it coming to even just a little bit off, that's always on, like, the bottom part. So, yeah, I'm, I, I kind of bring the whole pupil down and allow myself to look down it more to answer that question. And then, yeah, on striping, man, I just fix it as I go by doing, like, one stripe, you know, like I said, taper, a tapered stripe. And yeah, at this point here, we're, we're just, like I said, I'm building it out from flat uh, to something approaching round. And yeah, every now and then I click that foot pedal and kind of, you know, shoot some extra heat into those rods. And just, I'm just trying to like keep this really nice, even amount of heat so that it's like evenly flowing. I don't know, man, the analogy I'm almost coming to now is like, you know, I'm like a 3D printer, man. I'm just trying to keep that nozzle, like the setup for the nozzle, evenly hot and flowing. A GTT Scorpion. I use uh, in the chat, if you're not looking at the chat, the homie asked, uh, Dawson asked, how big of a milli do you think a GTT Scorpion could handle? Um, How could you downscale the project if needed? Yeah, you could totally downscale the project. Um, I think... I have owned a scorpion. It depends. If you have a Lynx Center Scorpion, I think you could go a little bigger. Um, you know, I tell you, it's not the biggest torch. Anything bigger than, like, a White Claw can, you're going to be in serious trouble. I mean, that's always the joke, man. Like, people have, into like, a soup can and, like, a tiny torch. Like, you got to avoid that. Um... All right, the way uh, to downscale the project is definitely, like, you can make your pupil shape and then almost pull it down like a milli. That's, that's one way to go about it, you know? Like you can make the shape bigger and kind of pull it down, and that actually tightens the shape up on its own in a certain sense. Um, or you can just make the shape smaller, you know? Um, one of my tips if you're going to do these, like, really small scale uh, is pull down some stringer. Like, it doesn't got to be, like, really small stringer, but, like, you might want to pull a rod from 7, you know, or 8 down to 4 mil, for example, for that initial layer around the pupil. Um, because, like I was mentioning earlier, you want to use, like, a tiny flame, as small a flame as possible, so that you can get, like, the, the rod hot, but you don't want the pupil getting hot, because that'll distort it. And you end up with all these little, like, indentions and shit, it just doesn't look right, you know? Like, we're aiming, like, I'm aiming for that shit to look like it was made by a, you know, like a fucking machine. Not the whole thing, you know what I mean? Like, it should have this organic, you know, like this handmade look. But the people itself, I want that shit to look like like, like it was photoshopped in there or something. You know what I mean? Like, I want that the shape to be fucking perfect. And uh, the way to achieve that is totally to, like, not distort it. 
Yeah, I mean, you go through all this work to shape it out. So, like, yeah, small as flame as possible. So, if you're going to do this small scale, and uh, and if it's just for you, that's totally possible. Like, I'm here trying to, like, make Millie defeat a store and a bunch of hungry subscribers, you know? It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, I got to do these things giant, you know? It's uh, But, yeah, no, it's totally possible to do them smaller. Um, the pupil, though, yeah, pull pull the rod down so that you can get those first couple of layers on, and then the pupil is protected. Then you can switch to the bigger rods, you know, kind of thing. And, um, yeah, that would be my advice there for doing it smaller. Um, you know, there there's like a, a technique that I've only done it a little bit. I'm, I, I just, I'm going to throw it out there. As you're going, you do have the option of pulling it down. So you could start with a smaller build that's like a little shorter, you know, and you could heat that up and pull it down and then continue striping. And it might even give you a really cool look. Yeah, I imagine that could be a pretty cool look. Let's yeah, see. like Neon a, mentioned it in chat. Maybe that would be a good approach. Like, pull. Oh, did he? Oh, shit. Yeah, well, he asked, would it, doing it in steps be a good approach for small to medium? So. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay. No, yeah. that's exactly what I was talking about. You yeah, know, exactly. I, I've played with it a bit. I um, I think that that what you end up with is like you're gonna see the difference of course you know like there's gonna be like this resolution difference between the layers but that could actually unless you're be pulling very cool your outer unless you're pulling your outer rods smaller than to yeah you, make you up could, for it but it could be yeah, pretty cool you, you could attempt to mitigate that but i think it would it might have this like organic mandala look yeah know, yeah kind of thing. especially if it were a, a component cane like this that'd be really cool yeah yeah be interesting to see yeah, no doubt. So right. yeah, I'm gonna, Dawson, I'm gonna step let's, away for let's one do second. it and see how that turns out. You um yeah. work on work on that technique and see if you can't post some photos for us in Torch Talk and see yeah, how that right turns back. out. Yeah, yeah. That's why I started talking. <laughs> so yeah, Evil Betty has been an advocate in chat. 78 people watching, get over there and smash that like button. It is at 33 right now, which is a magical number at all, but Let's see if we can't get it a little bit higher. And if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. Come, you know, get notifications to come hang out with us when we party. Like Mike said, this is going to be happening more often. He's got tons of great footage to edit and share. And Las Vegas is around the corner. He's going to have some folks out there helping him film. We'll have some stuff to share following that. A quick little wrap-up. A couple weeks ago, we did the, the onstage um, it was the onstage, I don't know, the whole Las Vegas wrap-up special for 2020? Was it 2021? I don't know. It, I'm, we're in a time warp here. I'm not sure what year it is anymore. But yeah, thanks for joining us. Yeah, I'm back. I'm back, Tom. Thanks, thanks for hitting that like button. Evil oh, Betty, man. you keep an eye on it and you tell him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I do appreciate the likes i'm not that dude who's like smash the like button guys but oh, no, that's I, me. I tell you it does it <laughs> uh it is nice nice when i when i see that the homies uh, appreciate the stuff anyways all right here we go okay here's something i like to do every now and then because you end up with these little tiny nubbins on the bottom or whatever of these stripes and um some of it's just like way too deep you know and uh so i just like to go through and and cut them shits off every now and then you know Shout out to Jim Moore on those uh, trim shears. I really like those trim shears, you know. I have a uh, cup shear somewhere, but the uh, the trim shear right there is like such a great all around one that like I just kind of use it for everything. Even though like some of the smaller ones might be better for that, I don't know. Yeah, shout out. That's a that's a nice scissor, man. And the D two is what you want too. They make like two versions of of his stuff. There's like a regular steel and then a better grade of steel. So for Boro stuff where we, you know, we work a good bit hotter, you want that D2. And Jim Moore, super nice guy, man. We met him at the gas conference down in Florida. Man, super cool cat, him and his wife. Hell yeah. He's got a doppelganger too. Oh yeah? Who's that? I don't know. But I see oh. him at those gas conferences. There's two of them. There's two Jim Moore's. <laughs> <laughs> What's like Willie and Wally, man, the twins or whatever? No, it's not. But seriously, they they're totally do doppelgangers. I can't believe I can't remember his name. I will at some point. Okay. <laughs> <Word>. <laughs> so yeah, um, 
<laughs> dogs, this is the uh, exciting process of Millie here. You know, um, like I said, uh, at this point, I'm just laying these series of stripes on either side of the shape, right? And it's this flat shape, so we have to add a, quite a bit of glass to take it out round. And so we've got some stripes on one side, and then on the other side, we're just... Each layer, like I was saying, uh, is a little less than the one before it, so it builds up to this, you know, the round shape or whatever. So that's what we're doing here, and I, I really, I think this is such an important part that I left this in, most of this in here. Like at full, full uh, at normal speed or whatever. Okay, here's a moment I want to share something, too. It's like, it's trick night, y'all, I'm telling you. I've learned a lot since we last did a milli demo all right um you know one of the things about like uh trapping air and then like or if air gets trapped like i don't like that and um in this case dirt when you're making the component a little air might get trapped so you might have like you might see like a little air bubble just appear as you're striping or you know air bubble might just be there period and in, in the rod itself um so what I do is I get my hand torch and I get it uh, kind of laser mode. And I go straight in on the bubble like you saw. I was just like right in on it. Bop, bop, bop. And usually they just – they almost immediately pop. And then uh, I it, – the second it pops, I, I start making circles around it so that the heat uh, – so that the glass around it gets hot and sinks into the space where the bubble was. You know, kind of fills that spot. It's very fast. It's just like pop, round, 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 and then and boom, it's gone. It's like nothing fucking happened. And then the other moment that I bust out the hand torch on these builds is if like there's like a weird crevice. Like I, I'll often go around in between um, layers of striping or whatever, and just just do like a super quick check. And I'll see if there's any spot that jumps out to me like it might trap some glass when I go to stripe it on the next round. Like I've got my striping glass very hot, you know, like usually we'll just flow into those types of things. But at the same token, if there's like any crevice that looks a little too deep or a little funky, I'm going to bust the hand torch out and just kind of laser it until it softens up a bit. Uh, and that way we're not trapping any air in it and it's like... Um, I've got my like, like air loss down to nearly zero now. Like every now and then I used like we we're not it was never much, but it's like every now and then I'd I you know like nip the cane or whatever, bust it open, and like I'd see like a little tiny air hole, and I don't like selling cane like that. So then I gotta keep nipping it back until that air hole stops, and um, oftentimes that just happens because a little there was just a little tiny crevice there, you know. And then uh, you striped over it. And, uh, all right, the new, new Normac asks, are you using studio lights to ID those imperfections? Nah, that, that, the light trick kind of works on smoother surfaces. These, this surface is too irregular for that. I just have to look at it and, like, see if I see any weird crevices kind of thing. I know what trick you mean. That's a really great trick for, like, seeing surface imperfections, you know, but in this case, it's like, it's not like a good surface for that. There's a lot going on, all kinds of stripes and shit. So yeah, but anyways, man, shit. Yeah. Like I said, there, there's, <laughs> there's so much time to talk on a demo like this, even with so much of it sped up. It's like, I felt bad every time I had to use that feature, but it was like, I kind of had this idea in mind of getting us down to about two hours because any longer than that, it's like just it's fucking crazy. And yeah, so here we go. We're still striping it out, and we still have that excess pupil on the bottom. So I I know exactly where I'm at on the top and the bottom. And this is really, you know, kind of brings the loss down on unevenness down a lot too, because like I said, if if you if you lose that reference point too quickly, you know, by globbing your handle up too quick, or like you know. Like, the longer you can maintain your ability to really see where the bottom's at, it's just so important with these pupils, you know? I said, some cats don't even care. But I'm really, I'm sincerely trying to make, like, perfectly centered, gorgeous fucking cane, you know? Like, I, I just, I, I don't want to sell anything but.
All right, now, at a moment like this, I want to take a moment to say, like, yeah, I'm trying to, like, um, even this build out just a bit and uh, make sure it has nice core heat. But at the same token, like, you don't want to round out all these stripes, you know? Like, if you if you cook it too much, it just it doesn't look right. Especially, like, this, it might not matter as much with this type of build where this cane has all this organic stuff going on, you know? And you're not seeing the striation as much. But it's, like, in a, in a typical eye cane, really important to, like, strike a balance between heating the build but not cooking the stripes in, you know? So you get, you know, these, these cool angles between each stripe. You know, there's been some that like I've rounded out too much, you know, I've, I've used the Marver too much and, and they still look cool, but like you really see it and it's just like, to me, it, it, it doesn't look right. It doesn't look natural. So something did to you, keep in mind. Did you What's fume that? these component canes? No, I like, did not fume them. Yeah. They're, they're just like their own striking rods and, and, uh, yeah, that's when I was showing them earlier. Cause like, you can even see, like they actually take on like their own striking properties and you can actually see this like flame strike that happened in each of the rods where i did the seal you know where i sealed handles onto them mm -hmm. that's one of the things i wanted to like when i was showing the cane earlier gotcha um, yeah it's like it's it's interesting the, these these mixed canes you know like they like i said they take on their own life and um what i've determined about this build in particular is that it's uh, a very much a flame striker I did a few encasements actually, and I just picked them up like before the show, so I didn't get to put them in here. But um, one of them that I flame struck more is like mad purple, and like the other two are like they don't have much color, hmm. and it's because they didn't get flame struck at all. I don't usually flame strike when I lens, you know. Like I really like to like kind of capture them real pristine, you know. The more you flame strike them, oftentimes. Uh, you get this like spacey look with like uh, a lot of them because a lot of the, the metals uh, come out to the surface and then when you lens over it it almost has like the look like um like i said it looks spacey you get this like i mean it looks gorgeous but it doesn't really show like the true color of the uh like w what the rod itself is striking to it's it's showing like metals coming off of it over that so you get like this more milky, spacey look when it's lensed. And that looks very cool. But I think that's not honest. You know what I mean? Like I want to show people what it does. Now in a perfect world, I would actually do both. But I'm, I'm I don't know. Man. Like It's all selling out without doing this. So I'm, not, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But like, uh, not really though. Like I, I like to do like <laughs> one good encasement, you know, and then I'm at the game. And it's like one good honest encasement and then I see how it I see how it does like with the session in the kiln kind of thing. And um but it, in this case, the this this is clearly a flame striker. So that's what I've discovered. Now it looks like you're gonna start adding some more layers on the top and bottom yeah, people. I think this might be where I looked at the bottom. And, um, and I kind of noticed that the base needed a little more glass on one side. So like, yeah, see, I'm studying it now and I'm like, look, and then I'm probably going to flip it around and look at the other side or not. I don't know. I'm crazy. No, no, no. I'm just playing. But like, I think, I, I don't know. We're either adding the last of that, that layer of rounding out, or we're at the point where I'm starting to assess the bottom, you know, and like seeing how even it looks. And I, uh, and like I said, at a certain point, um, I don't get it like all the way to the round profile before I do another layer around, I get it to about like this. See, there's still space to fill in. But I think at this point, I like to go all the way around, you know, and it just kind of helps it like round itself out a bit at that point. You can almost organically fill in those gaps a little without having to um, do as much surgery or whatever. It's hard to describe. But um, when it gets to about, it, it's like it's roughly rounded, right? Now right. I'm going to go all the way around and then, then it'll be even more rounded. You know what I mean? It'll kind of like, I don't know. It's like putting some weight on it. You know what I mean? It's like ch chubbing it up and it get it, like, it gets closer to right. It just gets closer and closer to round the more you go. If you start from that rough, you know, kind of place. Okay. 
I think here I might actually be doing the adjustment. It's hard to say. Yeah, see, I think I'm filling. Yeah, I'm filling in the side now because I was looking at it and I was like, all right. On the bottom, it looked a little different. So, like, these are like, all right, look. These are the moments that, that make the difference in the pull. I'm not fucking around. Like, if you don't do this, like, and you pull it and then you see that it's a little off, you're going to remember. Like, you're like, there's this moment where you were fucking looking at it. And it looked a little bit, and you're just like, ah, that'll round out. It won't. Like, study this shit. And get it right. All right, I think here's, now is where I'm going to start to round it out again. Because, like I said, that, that was that moment where I was, like, studying it. Mm -hmm. And really noticing, like, you know, what didn't match on the top and bottom. And it's, it's like, I don't, I mean, I don't know, man. I and mean, there's probably like fucking, I don't know. I just don't know anybody who's that robotic that, that you're going to just get lucky. And, you know, like it always takes a little bit of adjustment. So, you know, when you're doing these Millie that are not just around pupil, like you really got to, got to take these moments to, to feel it out. We attained roundness and readiness. I think, all right, so, all right, like I said, we did the adjustment, and then we did the rounding. We're not all the way done yet. We're going to do some more rounding, but it's to the point now where it's round enough that I feel comfortable axing that extra shit. And, you know, honestly, if you look at that build, um... It needed to have the punny, um, like, widened and, you know, like, it needed a bigger and better connection much earlier. So, like I was saying, that's like the, that's like the battle that you have to choose to, to wage. Like, you can have a more solid connection there and you have a, a less good view of the back end. Or you can fight the good fight, you know, and you might have to deal with a little bit more of a handle crack because it's such a weird area for heat to transition through. Like, and I really, I think it's worth fighting that battle. So, and here's where, like I said, I'm, I'm going to chop that extra shit off because I don't need it no more. Bam. Sliced one side and then went over to the other side and murked it, you know, done. We're on like a seven mil fucking handle for this giant thing, but yeah, it's so uh, I'm a little, a little crazy, but you know, like, like I said, man, like the longer you do this stuff, like the more you kind of realize, like, uh, you don't necessarily need as big a handle as you thought. It's more about the connection. I'm sitting here thinking, well, obviously it must not have fallen on the table because my, yeah, it, so. yeah I, 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 I I made that a nice connection. You can see it's thickened up a little bit and it's like sealed onto the thing, you know, like. And I will add, it's like hard to see, but like I actually don't go over the edge of that pupil. Like I'm very, very careful there. Like if it happened, it wouldn't be a big deal. But like there, there's like a little tiny, tiny, tiny ledge. I do not go over that ledge with that connection. So. And yeah, now I've got the, it's the same handle as before. I'm just going to now, now I'm going to glob that motherfucker back on and have a much better connection. So why do you have to remove it before putting it, putting? Because I wanted on? to slice off that excess black instead of cooking it into the base. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. yeah, yes. All right. It, it, don't get me wrong. I could have just melted it all in, but like it's this flat thing. You know, it's like it's easier to slice that shit off and then reattach the handle, and there's not all this extra black in the middle. You know? Right. Yeah. That. It's all just clear, and you don't have to worry exactly. about exactly. It. It's just yeah. a really clean connection. And like that black in there, that's kind of a heat sink because it's like right. a, a denser glass kind of thing. So yeah, okay. yeah. So this is a really important moment. Um, and yeah, like I said, like it ideally could would have been done sooner, but in order to preserve my ability to truly see the back end, uh, I do this very late in the game. And here's another one of these moments where like. I really take my time with that connection. Um, 
where it connects to all them little bumpy stripes and all that shit. Like, that's just not a happy place. So here's one of these moments where, like, I, I really do, I, I, I go above and beyond or whatever. Just because it's a really important spot. Like, if you nail this connection, like, you're never going to have to worry about it for the whole rest of the build. And if you fuck around here, like, it's going to all of a sudden cost you some shit. Your build can end up on the fucking bench. It's like, it's a totally reasonable place to go, at, like, you know, to, to at, go the extra mile or whatever. So that's what I'm doing here. And then, okay, so once it's there, it's always a little tug, a little tug, you know, a little rotate, a little tug, rotate, a little tug. You know what I mean? Like, just this, this, this even distribution and movement of glass. I call it the rub and tug method. No, I'm just playing. But like, <laughs> all right, now we Later, got this nice it, connection. My already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So yeah, man, we're just speeding through this. Like I said, we're just we're just rounding it out now. Um, it's a pretty straightforward build. I've been very careful, but like here, you know, like uh, another moment where like before you do this final rounding, that really is your moment to assess. You know, like if things are looking a little oval or if one side's looking a little weird, it's not a place you want to be at the end, but. Now's your last chance kind of thing to, like, bulk up any area that needs it. But in general, this was looking really good to me. And now we're going to round it out. Because we're at the very last set of stripes. So, oh, here's another little trick. I use, like, the shitty old pet handle. Or paddle, rather. Um, and I shield the handle with it. So it's like I'm raging on that end. I, um... I'm not going to do all the work on that end yet. I'm going to actually like get that other end, you know, kind of uh, proper first. But like this end needs to, you got to do something, you know, like you can do like a final rounding after you've got a moil and a handle on the other side. But we still want to, like, we're going to uh, add a layer of black on this and all that. So like. That's the trouble end, you know? It's got the handle on it, but it's one of the reasons we made this nice connection there. You're putting a layer of black on the outside of this, you said? We, we will uh, next, yes. But wow. we got to round it out first. And then that layer of black, you guys, it's like this thing that you see, like like most creatures have this extra eyelid out there or whatever. Like, it just adds this extra depth to the eye. Sometimes it gets encased and you never see it, but in some cases it really does help make it look more natural, so... I always add this extra layer of black around the eyes. And all of them you do that? Everyone. Huh. And I will say now, um, in in the past I use frit. And like I don't um I don't like frit no more. I've had some weird batches of frit that like bubbled the shit out of the end like edges of my cane, you know? And like I mean, I don't really think it would have mattered so much for the end user, but, like, I couldn't sell that cane like that because it looked like shit. And, um, and I actually still have some bubbling with Rod, too, but, like, not as much, you know? It's, um, it's not as bad. All right, here we're going to go that black. And, you know, I was mentioning earlier about those striping angles. I, I don't want, like, a crazy thick layer. I'm, I don't want I'm almost the thinnest layer of black I can get. So, um, we're at a very steep angle with the striping. The thing you have to avoid with that, though, is, like, touching the rod to itself as it starts striping, you know, and then it'll start dragging some down. Like, it, it uh, it's no fun. So, yeah, just this really steep angle and a really thin, even layer of black is what I like to do on these builds after they're all nice and rounded out. So that's, uh, what, Jet Black Eclipse? This is Eclipse. I've actually bought some Jet Black recently to use for this. And, like, I don't know, man. I I, I had to say, like, like, one part of it pulled down with, like, this little density difference. Like, I don't know. Like, it wasn't much, you know? Like, I felt like I lost about as much as I lose to Eclipse having a little bit of bubbles on this. You know what I mean? Like, don't get me wrong. It wasn't disastrous, but it was kind of weird. I was like, what the 
the hell is this? Is this like a part of the pot that wasn't mixed? Do you know or something? I don't know. So uh, I was like, damn, as much as I wanted to switch to Jet Black because it's a little cheaper, I've been sticking with the clips for the outer layer just because it's, you know, kind of my known quantity here. And yeah, so now we've got this layer of black on there. Um, I see these little dots that are a little further down. The, those were the times that the rod tagged itself. And when I was mentioning you want to watch out for, like, don't do that. That That's no fun. It's not that big a deal. Don't get me wrong. But I do like to remove that extra material. You know, like it's it's easy and just evens it out. Uh, the homie Norm asked, do I test my color batches and how do I check them? Um, you know, uh, really it's like when I go to make that pupil is my real chance to see it because like I'm twisting it up. I'm, I'm seeing how it reacts. Um, God forbid, like, like every one in a million years, you get like a batch of these blacks. That's all of a sudden starts to gray out. Like it's got, I don't know. It's, it's happened with eclipse and with jet black. So it's like, it's just one of them things. Um, so if that happens, I'll see it right away. Um, and I'll really right away. I'll get to see how bubbly it is. Cause I, you know, like I, I don't like to be negative on the show, but glass alchemy lately is like, the quality is just not right. It's like people I really trust have been making posts about it in torch talk. And, and like everybody agrees that their quality is not like, you know, like in these colors, like half blood, one of my absolute favorite colors. Like now it just shows up. It's barely mixed and, it's tough, man. And like, all right. If you're sticking with me at this part of the show, you know, like you're my dog. So I'm going to share with y'all a little, <laughs> little trick, man. <laughs> Just lay off my eclipse. Like, all right, look, man. And like this, even saying this, I feel a little weird, but like, I'm just going to be honest. All right. So I order like my stuff from Lampwork Supply, but this is true for any supplier. Okay. Like some of the color, they send them in bulk. And then like some of the color, they send them in the wrapped pounds. I am coming to this theory that the wrapped pounds of glass alchemy color are better quality than the bulk stuff that they send to the distributors like in mass. I don't have any proof of this yet. It's just like something I kind of... um. <laughs> came to the notion of and like it's it's like it's been true like the rap ba batches you know like if i've got a batch number on it like that i could complain about like there hasn't been a reason to complain when i don't it's like weird shit happens so like that's kind of my theory with glass alchemy right now is like man if i can buy the wrapped pounds i would not i i would not buy the bulk shit like just buy the buy it a pound at a time and like put a note in your thing like i want a wrapped pound because the shit that they wrap and put their name on and a batch number on seems to be a little nicer um uh, uh see mal my dog man fucking good to see you player ask if i've tried galaxy yes i have tried galaxy and i made this rainbow cane and like Man, man, what happened? Like, there was a power issue or something when I was working with the HVO system or something? I forget. Like, I don't even remember. There was an issue with that build. And, like, I don't even remember. I remember I had to leave and, like, come back to it. It wasn't that, though. I'm just going to say that, like, when the build was done, like, uh, I wasn't happy with my choice to use Eclipse. I didn't trust Galaxy it because I... Galaxy or Eclipse? Oh, sorry, not Eclipse. Galaxy, rather. Yeah. Um, I ended up, like, not happy with that. Like, not be... Like, I didn't end up selling any of it. It was a cool pull, but, like, it was Galaxy. It has Sparkle, and, like, I ended up having to leave it in the kiln for a long time. And, like, I just wasn't sure about it as a result of that. But then the other problem was that, like, the, like, the Galaxy, man, like, Galaxy is a little rough. And, like, the pupil had that same property. Like, the pupil didn't look, like, smooth. It had, like, this weird roughness. And then, mm. like, it wasn't that big a deal. But then when I tested it, like, you couldn't fucking see the sparkle. So I was just like, 
man, fuck. Like, this thing sat in the kiln. Like, he, the pupil looks rough and weird, so I don't even like the look of it. Like, I don't even want to, like, take a picture of this and post it and sell it. It just doesn't look right to me. And you don't see the sparkle. So it's like there's no benefit to it. I ended up just mm-hmm. trashing the whole fucking pool. Like, I didn't trash it, but, like, I ended up – it was, like, a cool rainbow encasement pool. I just didn't like it, and, like, I didn't trust it. And, like, there was no benefit to the galaxy. So that is uh, – that's my take on that one right there. It's like, yeah, I mean, a galaxy, like, it might even – it might be safe. Like, I, it didn't seem to cause any checking or anything, even though, like, I abused the shit out of it by leaving it in the kiln all that time. So, like, my my opinion of it is, like, it's a good color. It's just – I didn't actually see it show up in the pupil. Like, I wanted to do this, like, rainbow sparkle eye. That was the idea. You know, it's going to have a sparkle pupil and a rainbow outside. And um, and then it just didn't work out at all because, yeah, like, like I said, there were some problems with the build. And then you don't see the sparkle. So that's my take, yeah. So – um okay i wanted to mention there you guys saw me uh kind of be abusive to my rollers and then a homie asked about that um so when a build has been in the kiln and comes out uh especially like in the winter you're in like a like a studio that might be a little chilly um even when that is not but i found that the rollers can thermal shock the fucking handle so, uh, I just kind of preheat them in the flame and uh, roll them and make sure that the roller balls, you know, or whatever, like, and they're kind of beat down, man. But I've been doing this for years and they're still holding up. So, you know, and that's, that's like a major league tip uh, because it's rare, but I've really had that happen like in a couple of times. And um, I was like, fuck this. And since I started preheating the rollers, it's never, ever happened again. So I really think that, like, uh, it might be best. Like, these are some old-school Blast Shield ones. And they've got these, like, cheap style. The newer ones, man, I'd, I would hate to do it on the newer style Blast Shield ones. I almost recommend going to, like, Harbor Freight and getting, like, building your own roller or something, you know, with the cheap. They, they sell that style roller ball, you know. And you can make your own pretty easily. That might be my advice, uh, uh, you know, but we're just buy a sacrificial pair. Um, the homies in the chat are talking about using two rollers. You know, I've done that in the past. It's just like once it starts getting really loose, that doesn't really work out well. And then you've got to move it out of the way. I feel much more comfortable using one roller and letting my like letting my good hand uh, control the, the build on the other side, you know, like all the weight is on the roller. So it's like from there, I, I'm, you know, really able to control it. Yeah, homies. I, uh, I don't want to get ahead of anything there, but Carrie's mentioning in the chat, uh, Taffy, we, we have a really cool demo. Um, Scott Griffin, the homie, man, I think he's going to join us cause he makes the Taffy roller, you know, manufactures them. And we've got awesome footage of uh, Taffy using his roller, and it's a sweet fucking thing, man. It really is. Like, it's it's very very well thought out, and um, yeah, no, I mean, I've actually got a voicemail from Scott. I've got to return, so it's gonna happen soon. It, it, I mean, it could potentially even be next week or the week after that. Oh wow, that'd be awesome. Yeah, I mean, I, I there's no reason to sleep on this. I really want to share that demo. So, okay, um. Okay, so this build kind of came out of the kiln, and this is what I was mentioning about how this is my, like, opportunity to uh, really round out that other end. Like, I get it pretty fucking round, but this is my chance to uh, round that bad boy out. Gotta tell you, uh, Mike uh, mentioned in the chat he's been asking for a video of a Taffy demo. Um, I tell you, the footage of that roller demo, I think, is already on Patreon. So if you go to torchpass.org... That is already there, but it's it, the footage is waiting until I could have Taffy with us to share on the public channel, you know? So, if you want to see the footage itself, it's there. I mean, you're, moder- you're an admin dog. I, I'm pretty sure I shared it in the chat with you guys, too, so. Um, all right. Let me moil the other end up. And now it's, it's the game of build up that heat. 
and we're going to do the same thing that you guys saw earlier um, in the component build where like I'm trying to get virtually the entire build hot right now and just really soak this gorgeous even heat in there. And then I'm going to pull it down to a more manageable diameter and then do a quick pull on the middle to separate it. And then I'll have these two ends that are going to be much easier to deal with, you know, and I'll, I'll get the, the big handles off. And like I said, I'll end up with like two smaller chunky chunks or whatever. <laughs> now I have to change the names in my notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. And that one, I was trying to be really gentle. I really actually didn't want its weight to be involved. So I was kind of rolling it against the back of the L Marver and that just in that moment. But yeah, like I said, the purpose here now is to just put as much even heat into this build as I can and then pull it down a bit so that it's more manageable. Because this diameter is just too much for me to possibly pull at once, you know? I mean, if I was trying to pull a big coin bar or something, you know, like whatever, but you just kind of end up with this, this, it's like I'd have to use the flame the size of a lynx to pull a manageable size, but the lynx would take ages to get the heat in. It's just, there's not much other choice but to pull it down to a more manageable size first. You know, so that you can get these pulls that are going to be like an even amount of pull, you know. Because what happens is if you have if you heat up more than you need. You just end up with these like big tapered lumpy chunks in the ends of the pull. And that's not at all what you want, you know, like you want like these you want your chunky boys to be cleanly separated, you know. You don't need like a chunky boy and then like a skinny boy in the middle, like tapering up to like what you're going to cut. So this is a methodology and a, you know, a thought process for how do you do that? And like I said, then the only way you can really get to, to that goal is to pull the diameter down out the gate. And this is a small build. Like some of these builds that I do are much bigger, like way, way, way bigger, like double or triple the material involved here. So it really becomes important. And again, this is just that, buh, that build up heat, you know, like I'm going to drill a lot in, but we're going to, you know, step away and let that heat soak in. Same thing we did before, you know, like, yeah, we could probably pull it now. We could probably be like, rah. But beware the fool's pull. Yeah, like I said, man, I would I would call that the fool's pull at this point here, you know. Um it's where you think it's hot enough, and it might be, but it's just simply not gonna pull as evenly as it would if you uh you know take let that heat soak in and then come back like we just did now. I mean it's getting loose, it's already starting to come in a little bit, you know. Like I'm actually resisting that, you know, I'm like fighting gravity and that sort of thing. But yeah, if you can fight that good fight, it sincerely is for the better. It's just all going to pull down nice and even. Um, here's something I'm going to add about this. Like, if you if you do this, like, initial pull where you're trying to reduce the diameter and you don't build the heat up enough, it really will stress the surface. And then when you go to do the real pulls later, that those those areas that you previously stressed by doing this pull wrong will come back to bite you. They will fucking devit out and now that a cold haze on the surface and shit. You just, you don't want that at all. Whereas now look at this. We got this nice fucking, look at this thing. Much more even bar here, you know, so to speak. And now we'll be able to get the middle and then we'll be able to get those ends, you know, we'll have these much more manageable chunks. So, yeah, like I said, I, there's there's a lot of differences, you know, from the last, from this demo and then the last time you guys, you know, we, the last time we touched this topic, so. It's been a few years ago, hasn't it? It's been years, yeah. And, um, 
Yeah, it really has been years. You were in Virginia the last time you did an eye poll, yeah? yeah. Demo, at least. Yeah. And here's another moment, you know, like that, like it would, same thing in the component build. Like, yeah, this thing is hot as fuck. We could have done it right there, but here's another fool's pull moment. It's not the right time. Let that heat soak in. Let it, let it come down one more time. You know, it's just like Daft Punk, man. One more time. You do really, it, <laughs> the more, like it, it, you simply can't go wrong by, you know, doing that unless you lose control. And that's the fear. I get it. But just know that, like, there's a light at the end of the tunnel, you know, where, like, you end up with more control of the glass because you fought this fight repeatedly. I mean, don't do it like this when there's fucking, you know, $600 a cane on the line, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> but, um, there's all these moments, and it's, like, one of those things I talk about, like, um, like, where you kind of get your skills up. Like, I'm, I recommend working with two hands on hollow glass. Because then, like, when it gets all loose and fucked up, you're training your hands to deal with that. You know what I mean? That that doesn't happen so much when you just got one hand on it and you're kind of cheating. And here's the thing, all right? I, I'm very often blowing on that middle cane because, like... That, if you think, basically, that has to cool faster... Because the heat will go out of the ends too quickly otherwise, right? Like, you'll see, like, Hinun, you can kind of speak to this in the chat, my dog, who's been working out at the Starship. Like, Marcel's got the fucking compressed air thing, you know, to cool it down where it's pulled enough, you know, and it's at the diameter or close to it that you want. And that's what I recommend, actually, is, like, going close to the diameter you want, cooling it down, and then giving it the juice. Because that part will still go a little bit if everything is right. So if you pull to the diameter that you really want and then go to get the rest of that, uh, it's all going to go wrong. you got to go a little bit above that. And yeah, so this pull is not like, like the, the dieselist pull. Like some of my pulls will be, you know, like a little longer. But this pull is just like kind of in the middle. And yeah, that's a little trick that I do when I've got to like get it off like a the a big big end. And it's just really important that you have the nippers like aligned straight. I mean, much as I'm checking for now, but when you do that fucking knock move, and then it's uh, really important to have the wheels the the open end facing uh, outward on the cane. <laughs> All right, here's how this shit came out, y'all. And it's wow, like, look it, at that. It, th there's detail in here that like the camera just can't capture. I need to like, I need like a better camera setup, but I'm telling you, it just looks so organic and fucking real. That's gorgeous. And it, thank you. Thank you. And it, 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 like I said, like I, I, there's like a part of me is like, well, no psychedelic ones. Like they look cool in their own way, but these ones, I mean, they really look fucking real. Like they look like something than a real creature. And to me, it's that that look of like the cellular look, and all right. And here, I wanted to show you guys how I approach pulling down segments of cane. Like this is one of the chunky boys that's left after we got rid of uh, the end. <laughs> and uh, so check it out; it's out of the kiln, right? And uh, I I first put that nice heat into it, so I established some of that dank heat out the gate before I even put a handle on it. And the reason that I do that is um, it's just like a time thing. And um, like, why why should I put a handle on it too soon when the time I'm putting the handle on it could be time that dank heat is soaking into the core, right? So that's kind of my methodology there. So like anything that comes out of the kiln, before I get a handle on it, I get it to the point like really hot, like to the point that it needs a handle, you know, because it's getting so damn loose. Oh, uh, here's the same thing, building up that heat. Now I've got that handle on it. It's got mad heat in it already. And we just soaked mad heat in. And now we're gonna try and get it uh pulled down evenly. So yeah, I got like one heat before the 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 like before the handle even went on, then another heat. And then now look at that. She loose. 
And the bottom was pulling down a little more, so I really blew on that right away. And that part's good. So, like, yeah, see, I'm really cool in that part. And then I'm just kind of letting the rest kind of even out and match it. And it's like, oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> we got a lot of cane there. And there's like a little tiny, like I said, like a mini chunky boy on that end there that, I, that I'll pull down more of. But like that's like a really, really even section of cane. Really gorgeous. You the homies in the chat talk about games. Hell yeah, we're going to play some games. Yeah, Hanoon mentioned he didn't have a second screen. So Sorry, he might not be there. But if you guys Sorry, have no. a second screen, please yeah, join us. Uh, we haven't played games in a long time. Homies, if you're new uh, to how the game thing works, you need like two screens. So you need whatever you're watching the show on and then a phone or a second tab, something like that, because that will become your controller for the games. And guys, I, I wanted to sneak in a quick lensing demo just to show you all how I go about that. And um, I first, I, so basically I, I get in my nips, you know, and uh, I cold seal to the jankier end. So I, I hold the nip in like my tungsten tweezers or my uh, Marini uh, forceps. And like I kind of warm that that side on the edge of the flame. And then I like I said, I get a nice little just like a little cold seal uh, to the chip. And then I go in and I add my lens glass, which is what I just did. All right. Now, here's the thing, though. You see that lens glass isn't perfect, right? I just did the encasement. And then I stop. And the reason is that if you go in on that too soon and try and clean that lens up and all that glass up, you're going to fuck up the face because the face is hot enough to take the lens, right? So what I do is I just get it on there and then I stop, let it cool down. Then I knock that cold seal off and then I go ahead and work the back. I'll even even it out there, kind of make sure it's the same diameter as, as what's connected to the face. Maybe even a little tug, you know? But, you know, the back doesn't matter. And if it's something that's like has, you know, like backing it with a color would help, that's where we'll add the color, you know, black or the cobalt or whatever. But the ones that I take pictures of, I like to just show the, the, the glass itself, so... All right, now, now we can go back to the lens. If you go in on that lens too soon, you know, you're going to muck up the face. And that's what happens in a lot of people's milli encasements, you know, like they're, they're lensing it either too hot or whatever. I really like to just see that face start, just start to glow. Then the lens glass can go over it, you know, and then I, like I said, stop, do the other side. And, um, and then, okay. So I like to get this, like, like, like. I forget who came up, like, used the term, but somebody, man, maybe Stump, somebody, I said, like, it's a Harshie's kiss amount of glass in the face. <laughs> I like that. It's a good, like, analogy. So, like, I pull some of that glass off, and then uh, I kind of let it all nice and cook back in like this. And then, like, if that's what you want, great. If you want to see more of the, the um, more of the milli, you need to make that lens flatter. You need to make it more concave, right? Because it caves in. I mean, not actually caving in, but it needs to be flatter. You know what I mean? Yeah, it needs to pull so, back on itself. So you're holding it down, yeah, like the, the end of it down so that the top is exactly. up and the glass so, flows. Yeah, see that? So now I'm just letting gravity bring that lens down. And what you're going to get from that is you'll see more of the, the face. And I just want to be able to show everybody like almost all of the layers and the pup you know, and like the pupil. So for like my demonstration pictures, that's important kind of thing. So that, that, that's like the theory there. Hell yeah. Well guys, we did it, man. Fucking, I really appreciate y'all sticking with us for a good couple of hours. We're going to go ahead and uh, play some games after this. I've got some sticker packs and Millie to give away. I was really excited to share this though. Like I, I, I hope some of you guys out there might might take something from this. Um, you know, like for the money I, shot. The my on the my millies are you know kind of what get people addicted. You know, once you make an eye cane, you know you're like addicted to Marini. So something I'm really happy to help share and kind of 
feed that addiction or whatever. Um, homies, these cats out here are helping feed our glass addiction. Uh, all of these companies pitch in every month, and I just we just take a minute at the beginning and end to give them a big shout out. Uh, oh man, Pipe Classic! I can't wait for Pipe Classic 2022. The lineup is looking ridiculous. The Glass Art Society Conference is looking ridiculous too. Is this the year that's going to be a fashion show, baby? I don't think so. I think no, I think I it's being postponed. You know, the DFO is actually happening in the same weekend. That's, oh shit! Yeah. That's, yep. That's a that's a big problem. Yeah. Well. In any event, it's a good problem to have. Uh, right. In any event, guys, there are so many cool things in this glassy universe that we've had a chance to share. It's because these companies and events pitch in and kind of help us cover and help us kind of do, like I said, this is Mission from Glass God, baby. We're really out here trying to share something incredibly special that's going on on this planet. And like I said, these companies are pitching in to make it possible. So, you know, it, it, that, if you work with these companies, you can get a chance, you know, let them know you appreciate the shit. So, yeah. Yeah, um, it never hurts. The companies do like to hear. Yeah, they do. Where, um, where their advertising dollars are helping you. Hell yeah. So, homies, I really appreciate y'all tuning in. Um, We're going to go ahead and play some games. And we got some sticker packs to give away. I'm going to sneak. You know I'm going to sneak some million into these things. I got a fat-ass bag of cane here from that uh, one recent pull. The, uh hard to tell and it's that one with the uh, cherry wood strike this shit lights up like half blood or yeah something. It's done all, you know we throw in some pain in there from that we've got some, we, we've got some shit here to give away so um but i know there's some of y'all that don't know how to do the game thing or are not going to be able to play games throw some numbers into the chat one through 100 watch out for duplicates though and we'll give away one of these and some fucking millie right out the gate um and y'all go ahead and put those numbers in while i get the um the games loaded and such and to play some games hell yeah and noon right. watch everybody for those duplicates yeah and then like <laughs> the duplicate police <laughs> hell yeah all right all right here we go where's steam let's figure out how to do this i might just like remember my steam password or something i want to show you guys while i'm i'm on screen yeah, some of the other up. things i've been working on so I've been practicing this whole, you know, lensing yeah. thing with these awesome canes, right? And they don't always turn out the greatest, but I can still use them in mosaics. And this is a project I'm working on for myself right now. I'm making all of these little mosaic twisty hanger thingies, and they're going to be a fringe across the front of my porch. I'm kind of excited. Send sparkles everywhere. And I'm hoping they catch my lights. Ooh, hey, Trixie. Trick dogs watering in, yeah. Yeah. What's up? Where'd you go? Hi. Yeah. Dang. All right. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah. <sighs> Shoot. All right. Hold on. I have to find out what my Steam password is. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> I know this sucks. Sorry, guys. Give me just a minute. While you enter your numbers there, and I'm gonna figure out my fucking password. All right, hold on. It's, I've got a password. Yeah, saved. keep picking your numbers. And Mike did a little mention earlier. Um, there's gonna be a giveaway in Torch Talk sometime this week, I think, for a little candy heart dish. There's gonna be a naming contest. Like, come up with fun, fun sayings to put on these candy hearts. And that's going to be part of it. So put your thinking caps on and get ready for that. Dang. All right. Give me just a minute before the game time, dogs. I'm going to have to fucking reset my dang password because I'm stupid. No, no. That's what computers are for. This is weird. What? Bicycles. All right, here we go. They're emailing me an account verification code. This is tight. And if anybody has any game suggestions, yeah, who's gonna play, play? Who's gonna play games with us? Well, you know, last time we, last time we played that. Uh, 
It was Blitzkrieg, wasn't it? We played <laughs> we we played the Rappa game. That was, yes, we did. That was that was a lot of fun, actually. Mike's already got the low latency turned on for y'all, so it is. Gonna, yeah, we're in low latency mode. It should be good. Going to be easier to to keep up with us. All right, here we go. Bam, I'm in. All right, all right, all right, all right. Hell yeah. Okay. All right, all the numbers are in. Let's pick a winner for a sticker pack. Seems like it, yeah. And some Millie. Definitely got you all in this. Let's uh, pull up your pull, screen. Pull up random.org. As soon as I pull up random.org. Oh. All right. Thank you. All right. One through 100. Here we go. Y'all ready to do this? Clickety, 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 clack. 70. What's up? We got 70? I don't see a 70. All right. We're going to keep clicking them until we get a winner. Nope. I don't see a 43. One. Oh, this is going to be tough. Did anybody pick one? I don't see that. No? Did nobody pick one? I don't know if anybody did. There's only like I don't, yeah, 20, I don't see that. 20 options to go through. <laughs> all right. That's all good. I don't see it. 86. Nope. 57. Oh, what do we got? No, that's how many brews we had earlier. 16. And 13. That would have been my number. 63. Nope. 97. Whoo! This is not fun. We're about to switch <laughs> to like nearest one or something. Ooh, 89. Oh, 89. Yeah, 89. Michael Howell. All right, Michael Howell. That's you, Playboy. Um, dude, would you shoot me a message at uh, prizecentralstation at gmail.com? And you know, I got you the like, bad sticker pack, dude. I'm going to throw some Millie in there. We'll get you hooked up, player. Thank you for joining us, man. I really do appreciate all y'all out there. Um, and then, yeah, we got I got two more packs, man that uh we're gonna give away with millie and all that type of shit but but you gotta you gotta play games to win these so all right where's my games a library man there were new games yo let's play the new games did you get eight was that did you get the jackbox eight is that what you're saying new games no but new enough jackbox seven Oh, lather round. That seems like it was fun. It's all quiplash, yeah. baby. We're doing quiplash. All right, we can do quiplash. I gotta go to the, I gotta go to the bathroom. This I gotta go to the bathroom too, so we're gonna do the loading thing. All right, so you better sign in as the host. Yeah, yeah exactly. All right, so at this point, everybody, you will still want to watch this screen. So this screen is gonna be where you're gonna be able to follow along with the game. But that address, the jackbox.tv, you're going to want to grab either, like maybe if you're watching on the TV, you want to grab a little phone or a tablet and you go to jackbox.tv. It's going to ask you for a code. You're going to put the code in. Or if you're on a computer, you open another window up and you can put the jackbox.tv in as your controller. Just basically, you need the ability to have two screens. One of them is going to be showing this YouTube stream where the videos and the game is going to be, and the other one is going to be your controller. You can kind of play the game with just your controller, but you're missing like most of the game if you don't. Oh, I'll so, right back, dogs. Room Go code, join you get in? in? All right. Room code is ESZP. Go in, you put that room code in, ESVP. Welcome, look at that. So Mike's gonna press the button when everybody's in, but until that moment, let's see, I'm gonna make you star. Yeah, look at this. And then, you know, if you're still wanting to be in the game and there's not space left, you can always join the audience. 
most of the games have audience participation as well. I think this will. We just have to find out. Um, I'm going to leave you with your thoughts for a moment while you refill your beverage, go to the bathroom, take a recreational break. And there you go. It's time to join the audience. Holy shit, we got a full game. This is awesome. My dogs. Goddamn right. Well. And if you're not in, guys, you can still join the audience or whatever. So just keep that in mind. I'm just waiting for Carrie to come back. I'm, I'm back. I, I had to change my mind. I'm a kitty cat instead of a star. All right. You ready? Yep. All right. Norm, you can join the audience. It's Quiplash 3. Season of the Quip. <laughs> I'm Schmitty, and I'm trying to figure out which one of you will snort laugh. By the way, if you didn't get in the game, you can still vote as an audience member. Type in the room code to join. Ready for round one? You're going to see two prompts on your device. Answer each one with a brilliant response. Soon, you'll go up against another player's answers while everyone else votes for their favorite. Points are scored based on the percentage of people who choose your response. Let's quip. He's only like five seconds off. Yeah, we are. Homies. Almost out of time. Don't forget your safety quips. I'm proud to say we are in like low latency mode. So hopefully that'll make the game quicker for you guys than it has been in the past. No promises though. Okay, just need a second to write down your entries. It really has to be a better way to do. What do you say, shall we? Let's this thing looks like a fucking the psychedelic nicest asshole. You can give to a snake. <laughs> Punching your vote. Play into the crowd right there. I love it. Uh -huh. That's cute. I was good. All right, check this out. 
If they made a candle of your life, it would smell like blank. And now it's time to vote for your favorite. <laughs> A little bit of Mike Mason trivia for you, yo. My first word was eggy. Eggy. <laughs> boy likes some eggs, let me tell you. <laughs> Moving right along. The strangest clickbait headline, Hot Blank, are in your area. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, choose your favorite. <laughs> Moms of the Midwest. That's where I met Carrie. <laughs> Cat mom. <laughs> yeah, baby, Midwest girls are hot. That's right. <laughs> Let's see how they handle. What should you label your computer porn to prevent your mom from opening it? Oh, Lord. All right, choose your favorite. I was thinking, like, you know, like, torch talk or something, you know? Like, uh, she ain't watching that. <laughs> Next you gotta lean up. into it, you know what I mean? The special skill on a resume that would make you immediately make it hire that person. Yeah. Carrie, and open no that folder show, immediately, huh? though. I guess, uh, <laughs> <it's very laughs> not Instantly ended up with a computer virus. Next yeah. we have... <laughs> finish the rhyme. Roses are red, violets are blue, I got you this card, blank. Oh man, come on, Jake. Three points are still points, right? Jake was confused. It's okay. Oh, poor Jake. <laughs> Next on the docket, you know your date is a slob when you find blank in the middle of their living room. <laughs> All right, people, it's voting time. <laughs> I was going to say a Delta Elite because my torch used to be like in the dining room. <laughs> I just blamed. <laughs> Hawker for okay, this means they're It means they're very well prepared. A bribe? Is it a bribe to give a federal judge blank? Here's the fun part. Pick your favorite quip. <laughs> I want pickles now. Oh man, my pickled garlic is ready. It's so good. Yeah. Yeah, it tastes like uh, the Grillo's, but in garlic form. Bam! Man, the audience like pickles though, huh? They're hungry. <laughs> yeah, right. Round one Suddenly, is done, but not really forgotten. Let's check the scoreboard. <laughs> oh damn, man! The homie's Ooh. killing it. Woo! It's coming Round up for that two sticker pack. Round two is upon us. Put on your best quip <laughs> face because the points are doubled and the tension is thick. Ooh, and now the spiral anus is green. <laughs> <laughs>
Jake, you're looking at your controller right now, right? Filling in your answers. Just a few seconds left. Let's take a peek, shall we? At the front of the line is an extraterrestrial's honest assessment of Star Trek. Huh? <laughs> okay, time to choose. <laughs> I'm with you, Mike. <clears throat> That shit is a much more accurate prediction than anything Let's keep trippy. It going. A good way to distinguish yourself as the office bad boy. There are very few openly psychedelic episodes, you know. Okay, everybody, pick your favorite. Like when the travelers show up and like threw them into like a totally different fucking galaxy and shit. It was all trippy as hell. Like about as close as you got. True. True. Hey, Jake figured out where his controller is. <laughs> and here Dude, we have Red Max Paperweight established you as like the office broke boy. <laughs> <laughs> decisions, decisions. Choose your favorite. Oh lord. Motherfuckers be like bringing you leftovers and shit when you have a Red Max on the desk. <laughs> Where that office bad boy comes in. And next, that's a good answer, the by the way. Mike. A father could tell too. his son on his Not enough day. for your vote, but okay, sure, thank you. <laughs> Time to pick the one you like best. <laughs> And now, uh-oh, what scary conspiracy uncle talking about this year? <laughs> now it gets real. Pick your favorite. That was good. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Kai Beck demoed another year, though. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Doug. Kai's, Kai, you're my boy. I'm sorry. <laughs> Had to be done. Without further ado, instead of on hold music, companies should offer callers blank. All right, vote for the one you like best. That shit gonna be too personalized, and they're like, "Would you be interested in the new North Star color?" What? Next up, oh, I the best thing we to heard come you out really of New Jersey. Try Galaxy again. <laughs> no, I think Galaxy's awesome, and, and like I said, it just, it just the sparkle didn't show up. So what the fuck was the point, you know? <laughs> Sorry, I gotta nail him on this one. <laughs> and next is what the blue verified check mark on Twitter really means. 
Here's the fun part. Pick your favorite quip. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> And round two is finito. <laughs> Let's see if the same is true of your score. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Damn. Get ready for Griplash. A final chance to make a splash. You'll each get a prompt that needs three separate responses. That's triple the ha-ha's. All right, all right. I'm in there. I'm Time's in there. almost up. Hurry. I'm in that that purple. Mine's, I'm, I'm pretty happy with mine. Yeah. And, okay, let's do this. Two thirds of the way there, maybe. I don't know. Three words that will instantly drive you to irrational anger. Hmm. <laughs> All right, people, it's voting time. Oh, this is hard. Finally figured it out and nobody liked his answer. Let's be honest. The only things you really need to become a lawyer are blank, blank, and blank. Time to pick the one you like best. I love how both of these ha are the, basically the same joke, but like, when I'm like, went fucking, I went on the Jewish thing. I want to be clear that I'm Jewish so I can totally make that the joke. Three questions you must ask yourself Thanks, I was getting ready to make a note and send it yeah, to no, you. Yeah, no, no, I gotta give it up. The other homie, man, he made the exact same joke, but without going there, but I thought that would be funny. Because, you know. Okay, choose your favorite. If the rappers can rap about it, I can damn sure make a joke about it myself as a Jew, so leave me alone. Hire a Jewish lawyer if you don't like it. <laughs> People were scared to choose yours. I think they were. <clears throat> they were. They were like... Did somebody Jewish answer that? I don't know. <laughs> 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 
the three worst materials get the three on a little pigs could have built their houses out of. And now somehow it's gonna get canceled for, for a joke against my own people. Mike, we know you're Jewish, but we're not so sure about that joke you made the other night. Like. <laughs> Now let's see those final scores. Well. Big shuffle. Dang. Man, I only beat the guy who was like not here half the time. This is terrible. Not talking down on you, Jake. Yeah. Everybody's like, well, Mike, if you'd stop making fucking jokes about Jewish people. Or... <laughs> 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 All right, anyways. <laughs> well, that was good. So, Seamog won, right? Seamog last? Is that what happened? I totally forgot. I didn't even <laughs> look. Who won? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. If you won, send Mike a, a message. <laughs> if, you and... would, if you think you won, Price Central won. Station, is that it, right? <laughs> PrizeCentralStation at gmail.com. Uh, let's see. <coughs> no, I don't like any of these other games. These all are these are all too new. Yeah, we're gonna exit this shit. Blather round. Oh, who got first place then? Who won? Um, I don't okay. know. I don't remember. Somebody needs to tell us who won because we totally didn't pay attention. Daniel St. John won. All right, man. So. If everybody well, else me... agrees with that, then it's you. Yeah, dude. <laughs> You're good. Um, do prize central station at gmail.com. Please send me your, your, uh, email. And yeah, dude, I totally got you on a, uh, on a sweet ass sticker pack with fucking Millie and some other shit, dude. Yeah. yeah hell yeah. In fact, yo, who's still with us, man? Who's still out there? Who is still in the motherfucking house? Yo. Cause like, hold up, hold up, hold up. We about to amp this shit. We about to amp this next game. I don't even know what the game is, but there's like homies still here, and if you stay in here, it's true. Hold up, hold up. I see 33 people in here. I want those pickles. Thank you everybody for being here and playing games too. I love playing games. All right, all right, all right. This last fucking sticker pack comes with a jar of pickles. What? Ooh. Yeah, that's right. That's a real fucking garbage pail kids card. I'm throwing into the what in the last pack with million shit. So this last game, whoo! I'm telling you, these are hard to get. These are hard to get. I mean, there might be some on eBay right now, but whatever. I've been scooping them up for years, making them hard to get. All right, let's see. What should we play? Trivia murder party? We could do that. It is a classic. It is a classic. That's yeah. true. Classic that works well. Boo, man. Uh, 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 we got a we got a uh, we got a good one. Hold up. All right, all right. What what where's the sound? What happened to the sound on this one? Did we lose the sound? What happened? Let's look into this. Hmm. There it is. It's weird. All right, y'all ready for this? This motherfucker sounding like the new Glass Central Station sponsor music and shit. Right? It fits perfectly. 
Oh, that's what we're playing, dogs. We might play another oh, game back after to this. Racketeering? All right. I might be down for a trivia murder party with y'all after this, but this is what we're playing right fucking now. Racketeering is dope. There's room for lots of players here, right? All right, room code P V I L. Yeah, we gotta have 16 players in this thing, man. This is it. I'm not playing, man. We got fucking that garbage bell kid card. We got that fucking stickers. <laughs> it's happening. This game is fun as hell. I like this game. This game's funny. I gotta tell you, it's one weird sound issue after another, man. I've upgraded to Windows 11 recently, and it's, it's a little... I should have just stayed with that Windows 10, man. I'm not switching to Windows 11 for that very reason. Yeah. I don't want to troubleshoot anything again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. Yeah, that's weird. Daniel, are you in there? I tended to like pop up a little window and shit, like screen some video or something. Oh yeah? No. What just... video? <laughs> you never know what could happen around here though. True, true. End up staying all night watching Torch Pass videos. We're connected to a drive with complete insanity. It's true. I think this might be everybody. I don't know, man. Is this it for real? Maybe other people are back further in the demo, or maybe they're too, too scared. I don't know. Is this really going to be it? <clears throat> no, it says 32 people watching, but... Oh, we got another homie, man. Saw it by now. PBIL, right? This is Nico from uh, Virginia Beach. Is that where you found that? Stoked. No, stoked. No. That's right. Oh, look at that shirt. God damn. Get the crushed opal shirt, players. Look at this man. <laughs> Good. All right, everybody's in, but I'm not clicking that button. Let's watch. <laughs> let's watch some secret Nico Cray footage. <laughs> Woo! This is some dang footage, right? Shout out to the stoked homies. I mean, it's like a fully stoked night. I'm wearing a stoked shirt. I was wearing the stoked hoodie. Yeah, and yeah. Thing, man. I get my dogs. <clears throat> I love the stoked homies, man. They're really great people. It's true. In fact, man, I'll show y'all something that you don't really get to see. Let me see if I can show y'all this properly. Look at this. This is the other side of my place, man. Like, the, the side you don't get to see. But, like, look at this. I have all the stoked things on the side there, man. If I can chill them, you can actually uh, see that. In the corner there, you can actually see the Krunkelstein one in the corner there. Those are all the Stoke posters thing, though, and I, I framed them up and did a little arrangement there. Well, you could see it earlier, but when he stepped back, there's a Krunk one hiding out there. It's got music and shit now, too. Doesn't this feel funky? <laughs> I like it, yeah. <laughs> like Nico Cray porn or something. 
Yeah, see, there's that, the Krunkelstein that, one that's that hanging on my on wall, y'all. <laughs> see that shit? <laughs> yeah. So that I, I, they fit, but they basically fit into a record, uh, like a record cover frame. So I put them into those and then put them up on my wall. Oh, that shirt is sparkly. Right? Hell yeah. Shout out to the homie man, fucking uh, Connor. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Talk about your flat cane. <laughs> flat tube. Flat tube prep. <laughs> Nico's the man, dude. We've been trying to have, he's, he's like, I'm down to join, and then we've had trouble lining this up. I'm gonna send Carrie in to do the, like, the closer here soon. <laughs> he's making the head for like a sick ass snake pipe. music and the shit. <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> this is so, like I said, man, it's a looser night tonight, you know, when it's my demo. <laughs> we can do whatever the fuck we want, homies. It's, it's our show. Seriously, though, this is some tight-ass shit. I'm ex like, this whole demo is actually up on Torch Pass, as I recall. I got to put Jackbox music over the demos. I know, man. This is the new Steez. <laughs> I haven't looked at the chat, but if anybody is like, can we play the game already? Like, you just need to leave, because this is tight. Yeah. No, there's nobody. Nobody over there. There's Nobody, cool stuff. Like, suddenly there's more that? viewers. No. Everybody's happy? All right, yeah. good. Look at this. <laughs> Mike Astro Walker is complaining, but... <laughs> <laughs> This is tight shit though, look at this. Woo! Always had an eye. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's watch that, actually. Sorry, sorry, I fucked up. Let's let's continue watching this this video till the end. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Look at this shit. My man's got a milli eye loaded up. Studio at Stoked. Somebody said, Is this the studio upstairs? Yes, it's upstairs, dogs. Ooh. Mega shout out to my stoked homies, man. Fucking 
Everybody out there is cool as hell. I love all them cats. Stoked as the shit. Let's do this. Ooh, we have 12 players now. Right. God damn right. Here we go. We've got big fun waiting to be unleashed. We'll be posing some of life's most important questions. Your answers will be paired off in a no-holds-barred tournament. And your votes will determine which answers advance in the bracket. As we whittle down to our championship winner, this is Bracketeering. I'm sending the topic of our first bracket to your devices now. Coolest thing to say right before you die. Wow, that's heavy. The words I'm saying right now could be my last words. Or these. Type in the best answer you can think of and hit send. If your answer wins the entire bracket, you'll be rolling in moolah. By the way, you can join the audience and play along by going to chatbox.tv and entering the room code. Time's running out. Your answers are being paired off into one-on-one -on -one matchups. That means it's time to introduce ourselves to the prediction table. On your device, you'll see one of the upcoming matchups <laughs> for this bracket. If you can predict the answer that will get the most votes, you'll earn some sweet, sweet moolah. The predictions are in. It's time to dive into our first bracket. Oh boy. Use your device to vote on which you think deserves to win. But don't forget, if you change your mind, you can change your vote. This one's looking over. <laughs> Oh, too close to call. Tap on your device as fast as you can to cheer for your answer. That tie went bye-bye. Finally, we can go on with our lives. A cash prize if you predicted this would happen. Next up. Potential winner starts to emerge. I don't know if that's like the coolest thing, this but it's pretty fucking like It's over before it's done. <laughs> it's like, man. No contest. That thing he said was pretty lame, but. He did say something wild before he died, all right? You know what I mean? <laughs> Let's see what tensions are mounting over in the Omega Conference. <laughs> the gold at. Uh, let me guess who, who made that one, Mike. <laughs> the lead keeps changing hands. Pretty cool. <laughs> it's time to round out the bracket with this vicious matchup. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I am on the edge of my seat. Epic showdown! That was a real Fuck nail yes. biter. Nice. <laughs> Is that you jumping? Maybe. Before we get on to round two, <laughs> it's time to make another prediction. Predict against me. You've got a new matchup you predict waiting against for you on yourself. your device. Predict the one you think is going to win. 
I gotta predict against it myself right now though, because my man's answer is pretty goddamn good. <laughs> yeah, Fucking Mike Astro me. Walker, more motherfucker. All right, I'm getting another drink. God damn it. <laughs> Time's running out. Time's up at the prediction table. Let's jump back to our bracket for round two. All right, what's happening here? These answers exchanged some harsh words at the press conference. Man, this motherfucker with the cure shit over here, but it, it's good. It's good, man. Whoever said that shit is like, goddamn. A real tug of war. I'm gonna have this motherfucker start writing for torch talk. A seesaw battle if I ever saw one. <laughs> like, what up, you boys? Been through the fire, now the flames. Here to share some dang shit with y'all tonight. Blah, 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 blah. You know, it'd be like, God damn, man. Mike started talking way smoother. Blah, 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 blah. We're just one match away <laughs> from our finals. Both of these answers barely made it past the first round, and one of them isn't making it to the third round. Yeah, I gotta go against myself here. That was a good one. Whoever flirted with voting for me, thank you. Now. I appreciate the look, even for a moment. Now at least I know the you scenario. You will not be denied. The scenario. What now, Carrie? <laughs> Carrie, I, I didn't hear you say that again. And now, I know now the, the definitive matchup. What is the Those coolest thing to say right die. before you meet your maker? Mike, step away from the ledge. Some early votes. It's not a cool game. The struggle is real. Yeah. Our first Sorry, man. Whoever said that shit, that was cool, but like... Yeah, man. You gotta like play to the crowd. Let's Good job, Mike. Scores. I knew that was you, dog. There's no way that was anybody <laughs> but you. <laughs> yeah. Very good. What's that? Solid metal. It's time for the blind bracket. Wait, what? We start with just the category. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. oh, we're not even done yet. I thought Name it was I... any board Shit. or card game. Go ahead and write the first thing that comes to mind. We'll see the real bracket title after the answers are all in. What the fuck? God damn it. How can I not say sexual Time's Uno when somebody else said Uno? Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what this bracket this, is, this is really bullshit. about. <laughs> the game most likely to result in a huge friendship ending fight. Sexual Uno is the right much <laughs> better <laughs> answer. God damn Time it. to get in those predictions. <laughs> it's like blow your friend's boyfriend or fucking or draw fucking eight cards you, you, you're sucking that dick i'm sorry <laughs> oh well how does sexual uno get into it because i did somebody literally say sexual uno other than me because i was just told uno was the one whatever mm. anyways <laughs> time's running out <laughs> Oh, prediction table time is Thinking up. Thinking about the implications. Up uh, first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I ain't drawing eight. <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> Sports talk against humanity. That's good. Yeah, it is. I, I, yo, I do own Cards Against Humanity, and it's at the studio for anybody who ever stops by and wants to play. Oh, is this it This one really? seems like it's over before it's done. We don't just fight. play games online. That was a good answer. Whoever fucking picked that, that was a great. Yeah, one. that was really good. Solid. Moving on to our next matchup. I mean, to be fair, Solitaire is a pretty good game. A clear favorite. 
Trends. Man, I don't ever want to play either of these goddamn <laughs> games, but spades is some shit they play in prison, so like, no. Nah. Wait, wait, Perch DC is awesome. Nobody I plays play that in Perch prison, DC? though. Like, you're likely to get fucking shanked on, on spades. Yeah, I can see that. It doesn't get any closer than that. I mean, they probably do play that shit in some prisons, but not in America. No, India. <laughs> Why don't we see what's going on on the other side of the bracket? No and life. Motors are being loud Yo, and clear on this one. Sexual life is like sexual life. Which one? life is like a shitty ass game, man. Definitely, it'd be like, it'd be like your marriage failed, like da da da. Like you're likely to shoot somebody up after playing the game of life. <laughs> like what? <laughs> Like, yo, that shit's cute when you're eight, but like when you're like 42 and been through that shit, you're like, what the fuck? Fuck you. There's sexual Uno. Sexual? How does a sexual Uno keep popping up? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Yes. Confirm that sexual Uno is the game that makes people fucking break up. <laughs> that was ugly. <laughs> I've never played this before. I don't think Cheat on your spouse or draw game. five. Everybody's like, ah, oh, man, hell no, I'm fucking I'm that dude. Five. <laughs> <laughs> it's Get on the round two. It's time to make another prediction. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> this is the best one. They're asking me which one is the most likely, and it's Uno or Sexual Uno. Exactly. Which one? <laughs> mm. <laughs> We have to come up with this game and market it and like sell it. We're we're all gonna be millionaires. <laughs> you know, would never fight back. I'm sure. Yeah, the real game is like, like the fight for the battle over who owns Sexual Uno. But I'm sorry, the way I described it before any of the entries makes me the owner. Okay. All right. It's a bracket like this that truly makes this game the sport of kings. That's a good answer, man. That's that's gonna be a tough one to beat. It doesn't matter how sexual the Uno is. A regular juggernaut. <laughs> this could be the answer to beat, but let's check out the competition. What? Two what? Happening? Off. Somehow they let everybody else's sexual Uno sleep in but mine? Like, what's going on here? <laughs> One person is like, I, I like regular Uno. <laughs> yeah, no. Regular Uno sex enough. No. Regular Uno, no, no, no. Sex just makes it more likely to end in an orgy. It's gonna turn and into now Twister. The final face off. <laughs> what is the game most likely to end in a fight? <laughs> I don't know what kind of sister you played, but... Oh, uh, it's such a tough one. <laughs> but it's true. It's, it's really going back and forth. Like, how strong... Like, how many cards strong is your relationship is a new metric. We have a winner! <laughs> okay. God damn right. <laughs> God damn name? motherfucking right. So I didn't even think they let that sneak in. I was just like, I'm not Let's even competing this round. Scoreboard. What does the reverse card mean in sexual Uno? I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> All right. Time so for the finale, the, the triple there? blind oh, bracket. More. This bracket will change every bracket. single round. I know. Here's your starting category. Give any short insult. <laughs> Who knows what crazy twists and turns this bracket will take. Time's running out. Let's see what we're dealing with. Most likely thing to hear in a New York City cab. Time to get in those predictions. 
All cash is doubled this round, so make these choices count. <laughs> I gotta step away. <sighs> Time's running out. That's time on the prediction table. Here comes trouble. This is why we do this, folks. An upset in the making. This one's looking over. Oh, the big truck goes vroom, vroom. All right, all right, I'm back, I'm back. Yeah, see, I was gonna, I thought about doing something like this, and I was just like, you know what, I'm not even Next gonna up. bother. The dogs had this one. <laughs> Out of the gate with a big lead. No one thought it would be this close. This one seems like it's over before it's done. Don't be a fool. Uh, laser tag! There's cash if you predicted this one. Let's see what's happening over on the other side of the bracket. These answers faced off last year, but will the results Dang. be the same? <laughs> Sorry, man. I gotta go with cunt. That's a good one, man. Talk about the shortest insult and New York. Come on, hoser. Tick tock, tick tock. Oh, <laughs> winner, like winner. Sixth grader. <laughs> yeah, I swear to God, that's some like Chicago shit. I remember, yo. Know, hoser. Off. I swear to God, I was like in New York or not New York, rather it's Chicago time one time. With this vicious matchup. And it's like all late and it's all like cliche and shit. And I swear to God, I walk past these like two punks like in like a doorway. And the lady a was like, tug of war. blow it out your nose. I was just like, what? Like, this is the fucking 50s? What the fuck did you say to me, lady? Blow it out your nose? She said that shit, I swear to fucking God. Hmm. We're changing okay. that bracket title again. I ain't said a word to her. I ain't even look at her. Get those predictions in now. I couldn't believe she said this corny ass bullshit. Time's running out. Time to step away from the prediction table. Let's jump back to our bracket for round two. I can't believe I'm seeing this. running out the clock now. G -g 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 ghost <laughs> The finals are just a win away from these next two answers. It's all cunt, man. Come on now. The struggle is real. Cut, cut, cut. My bench traps are better. My bench traps are better. My bench traps are better. Cut, cut, cut. See, it's not. They're on fire. Not even close, baby. I'm sorry. I love you, but not even close. I don't know. I think mine was better. I don't think so. 
And it all comes down to this. <laughs> Don't make me chant it again now. slogan for an airline. <laughs> I hope your answer oh, still really? makes sense. My and best, now my the best definitive matchup is better than cunt for an airline. God, man, no, 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 no. It's gotta be cunt, man. Like You're the welds are jank, the plane's gonna crash. The lead keeps changing hands. The welds are jank, fly southwest. I don't think so. Will we see? No, no, no. That's enough to win. <laughs> God damn it. Let's see who won it all. Who the fuck is 1T? 1T, 1T, 1T. Yeah. Alright, well, whoever the fuck is 1T, whatever that is. You hit me up, Playboy. Right? Prize Central Station at gmail.com. Yeah, I mean. Uh, like I said, dude, fucking, uh, whoever the one T man, you gotta hit me up, dog, cause I got the, 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 the shit for you, man, the fucking garbage bag. Oh, it's card. tape deck. What? That's my boy? Seriously? Yep. Fuck yeah, I love it. All right, excellent. Uh, Carrie, you choose the next game. What do you want to play? Any, any game you want, it's your choice. What is that one game where... They have all the words up in the top, and the, is it blather round where the words are up in the top, and you like choose something? I don't know. What? Yeah, I don't know. It's been a long time. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, blather round? Is that like in what? Wait, what? Is it blather round? I can't remember. That's in the newest one. You want, all right, let me, let's have a look. It's like I said, it's Carrie's choice. So let's, let's, on you. let's try it. See what it looks like at least. All right, here we go. If this game sucks, it's totally on Carrie's. So. I'm sure we've played it before. So. I just can't remember if this is the one that I'm thinking of, though. All right, room code R C I Y. Is that it, or is there one more spot? Um. Oh, I. I think there's a couple people in the audience already. Really? Yeah. How do you see that? It's on the screen. Where? Where's the audience? It's right oh, below tape deck. Side. Okay, yeah. gotcha. For a reason. Okay, so that doubt was just part of the graphics. Welcome to Blather Round. If you didn't come here to make friends, then get out of here. That's what we're all about. You're going to present a secret prompt, <laughs> like Moby Dick. You'll describe it to everyone else with sentences like this one. Now, you can change some of these words, but your options are very limited. Everyone else will be guessing while you make more elaborate sentences. Is this oh, the game, baby? It's a lot like yeah, I think it is. Too. Moby Dick! Be fast to win big. And teamwork is rewarded. So talk out loud and work together. Let's begin. Round one. Pick a prompt. Remember, don't say it out loud. It's a secret. Hard prompts are worth more, but easy prompts take less of an emotional toll. 
<laughs> now you're going to craft a sentence that describes your prompt. On your device, you'll see two word columns. Pick words to build a sentence describing your prompt, and then tap oh submit God. when you're finished. Oh, and you can choose more than one word in each column if you want to get creative. Time is ticking. Somebody's got to go first, and it's you. The category is place, and this is the place to be. It's a joyful territory. Start guessing, everyone. Use your device and type it in. That means everyone in the audience, too. While he guess, the presenter writes another USA. sentence. Australia. Heaven. Las Vegas. Glass Studio. Taco Bell. <laughs> it's where you have Heaven. the metropolis. Northwest. San Francisco. New York. Chicago. Chicago. Disney World. Atlantis. Mini. It's nothing <laughs> like Las Vegas and Northwest. When the presenter uses your Great guess lakes. in a sentence, you get points. Dubai. Redwoods. The beach. So much emperor. Aw, look how little that sentence is. Pages. I love him. <laughs> We're nearing the end. Guess, guess, guess. China. Great Wall of China. Ryan. Mexico. Italy. Britain. Antarctica. India. It has the same vibe as. Ooh, a rough start to the game. Nobody got it right. Yeah. Hmm. If you saw the answer and thought, oh, <laughs> that makes sense, then hit my bad on your device. The category <laughs> is story. It's a story about a sneaky thing. Let's do this. Torch talk. <laughs> <laughs> and a small bad trouble buddy. Garden of Eden. It has the same what? vibe as Torch Talk. <laughs> Sylvester and Tweepy. Hobbit. Whoa. A fuzzy mutation. Now that's a sentence. Lord of the Rings. X-Men. Five Oak. It's nothing like Garden of Eden. The hero is the puppet. Hmm. Monster Incorporated. Sesame Street. Pinocchio. Doc Crystal. It has the same vibe as Lord of the Rings. That's a fancy sentence, Professor. 
time is running out. Time to take some big swings. Harry. Eventually, there's a disastrous fuzzy pet. It's almost over. Keep guessing. Harry Potter. <gasps> you did it! You did it! Nice job! You got it! Baby. You got it. <laughs> That was hard. <laughs> Who fucking loves you, baby? Nice work, <laughs> my love. <laughs> and hey, here are some points for everyone who contributed a helpful guess. Bam! I'll be right back. <laughs> yes. The category is story. It's a story about a charming family. Off you go. The Incredibles. Brady Bunch. Adam's Family. Snow White. And the Young Laughter. Simpsons. Rapunzel. Family Matters. Home Alone. <laughs> Beauty and the Beast. It's kind of similar to Family Matters. Family Guy, Simpsons. Grow it. Why? A live action nephew. What a fabulous Goldie sentence Goldilocks and the made. Three Bears. Nice. Oh, wow. Very good. You actually did it. Not that I'm surprised. I had faith in you. They picked place. It's an incredible, glorious place. Here we go again. Gold. Gold mine. <laughs> Mountain. Bahamas. Your mom's. Toronto. Gotta keep it Canadian. It's where you behold the altitude. It's a lot like mountain. Alps. Mount Everest. Space. Airplane. So much architectural wonder. All the cool words were invited to that sentence. Pyramids. Inlays. Eiffel Tower. <laughs> Skyscraper. World Trade Center. <laughs> Egypt. <laughs> Golden Gate Bridge. It's kinda similar to Alps. Pyramids. Mount Wood. This place has an ancient terrace. Rockies, Coliseum, Rocky Mo Nines, K2, Great Wall of China. Oh, ho, ho. Machu Picchu, damn. God damn, dude. Somebody went for the hard shit. Wow. And a good time was had by all. Wow. <laughs> The this is a good is one, Carrie. Good job. Oh, I'm glad you enjoy it. It's fun. That's a good call. It's a youthful, fun, hard place environment. Let's get the presentation started. Army. <laughs> Playground. Children's Museum. It's where you construct the family. Construct the family. Mosh pit. Church. Hmm. <laughs> School. It's kinda similar to Playground and Children's Museum. Daycare. So much game assemblage. Ooh, I'm jealous of that sentence.
YMCA in the garden. Youth Center. School. Time. Basketball court. It's bigger than children's museum, elementary school, and rec center. University. This place has a pine-sized toy. Arcade. College. Get your guesses in before this thing wraps up. McDonald's. Mall. Amusement park. Gold mine. Roller coaster. Disney World. It's for people who also like amusement park. Time is almost up. It's where you like the park. Oh. I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. Oh my god, I'm kidding. I love you. Let's end this round on a high. The category is thing. All right, dogs. I could just tell you what it is, but it's I'm going to be matter. fucking... You Here know what go. I mean? It's not. Torch talk. Molten glass. <laughs> Sludge. It is the specimen. Sewage. Peanut butter. Flat cane. Hunt. Lave. <laughs> Peanut. <laughs> Cheese. Bacteria. Amoeba. Mike. Jelly. Gelatin. It's a lot like bacteria. Virus. Slug. Flam. Cells. Mike. <laughs> oh. My man. <gasps> My motherfucking wow. boy. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> rocks this game. Dude, we did it, dude. My boy. We just killed it. We just killed it on three things. Everybody's My man. Had a turn. Thank you, Let's dude. See Good the job. Scoreboard. You may nice. have started this game as friends, but by now, you're bitter rivals. Me and my boy running this this thing, it doesn't matter, we ain't no rivals. Two, just for you. <laughs> <laughs> the points are doubled. These round two prompts are juicy, you lucky ducks. Pick the prompt that seems like the most fun, or the one that seems the least. Write a sentence to describe your new prompt. Did you know that you can scroll the lists up and down? You might have more words than you think. All right. You're up. The category is thing. It's a sweet liquid. Here we go. Juice. Coke. Juice. Soda. Honey. Honey. Soda. Nectar. Lemonade. Mountain Dew. It embodies the event. P. Beer. Soy sauce. Why? Nectar. Champagne. Sparkling wine. Wine. But like alcohol. Mead. Liquor. It's nothing like lemonade, Mountain Dew, and soy sauce. Talk about seasonal. 
I absolutely adore that sentence. Mango. Urine. Clickety clickety clack. Oh, good one. Good job. This is a fun game. Yeah, I better put on a bit. Really makes you think. Getting call. success yeah. everywhere. <laughs> The category is thing. It's a loud item. Off you go. Gold. Horn. Speaker. Whistle. It disrupts the human. Horn. Bass. Concert. Bell. Mic. Damn! That round got me so pumped up, I don't even need to drink the rest nice. of my caffeine milk. Okay, I'm getting that as a tattoo. You guys are killing it. The category is place. Oh, I forgot about this shit. It's an ancient place. Here we go! Egypt. Pyramids. Desert. Us. Pyramids. It's where you connect with the myth. Stonehenge. Aztec. Greece. Rome. Greece. Greece. Giza. Amazon. Much you can always hit skip to get a new sentence with new words. China. Jerusalem. Scotland. So much team. A fun size sentence. El Dorado. It's kind of similar to Scotland. Olympia. Russia. Ireland. Oh, Ireland. what's the thing with stones? Iceland. Time is ticking. Hurry, hurry. UK. Britain. This place has a romantic guy. Romantic guy. Norway. Stonehenge. Stonehenge. Eiffel Tower, Switzerland, France, French. France. Time is almost up. Venice, Paris. Eiffel Tower. Hmm. You motherfuckers. Cam, oh. Oops, you failed. Yeah, I didn't have anything about nights, huh? The category is. I know, man. I thought that might give me something a little more I could work with. I'm not blaming anybody they out there. <laughs> Except for all y'all. And we're off. Except for all y'all. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. They just didn't give me nothing to work with there. I thought I could give y'all something Joseph. more to work with, but they didn't give me nothing to give y'all. And okay. So, you know, Caligo. Just multicolored individual, eh? Hey? Goddamn. It could be anybody. Calico. Muppet. Here's where we really get canceled answering this shit. <laughs> they create the phenomenon. Mike. Molly. Northern Lights. Angels. Demons. LSD. <laughs> LSD. Superheroes. They're nothing like Ali, Muppet, and LSD. Aliens. He's so eccentric. <laughs> Many sentence for maximum impact. Jesus. Odds. 
You got like a Technicolor dream coat and shit. You know, like, yeah, that's, that's what I did. Jump. They paint better than Jesus in mushrooms. Mm. Picasso. Mm. You haven't got long left. Bob Ross. <laughs> Good job, babe. Wow. Wow. Nice. Tape deck connected Good job, again. Tape deck. Good job. Tape deck killing it. Amazing phrasing. <laughs> tape deck, you're good at this. We can tell. <laughs> the category is thing. It's a colorful rectangle. Let's hmm. do this. Prism. A cob. White House. <laughs> Frame. <laughs> Painting. It is the item. House. Toy. Couch. Jacket. It's a lot like Framey. Lego. Rug. Bed. Computer. Window. Talk about daily. Stained glass window. What Windows. a sweet little sentence. Window. So small, so cute. Shower. Calendar, huh? Colorful rectangle, eh? You did it! High five each other, hug the dog, <laughs> smile politely at the cat. Yeah, y'all motherfuckers. No, Time for the final this. presentation. They're over in Discord cheating. The category is person. <laughs> Some of my favorite people are person. They're a fictional human. Here we go again. Jesus. <laughs> Build. You know what they say, Jesus. better done than perfect. They are renowned for the expedition film. Clean Ponty. Columbus. Johnny Bravo. Aragorn. They're kind of similar to Columbus. Blackbeard. James Bond. He's so whip smart. Why, that sentence could fit in the palm of my hand. Christopher Columbus. Nicholas Cage. Sherlock Holmes. Jack Sparrow. Marco Polo. They have the same vibe as James Bond and Nicholas Cage. Time is running out. Submit more guesses. Ugh. Yay! Tape Deck got it. Damn, he's good at this game. Damn, Tape Deck. Hit. Whip smart. All right, all right. Yeah, yeah, God exactly. It, it gives me great Hard. pleasure to announce the winner. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations! <laughs> Thanks for playing. Next time you host and I nice. play. All right. Do we all want to play again? I mean, I'd play one more game if everybody's up for it. I know it's getting kind of late, but... <laughs> Whatever. Says 25 people are watching. Welcome back.
back. You're the best group that's ever played this game. Don't tell the other groups. <laughs> I mean it. So you're the best group. Yeah. It's round one. I'll never say a word. First up, choose the prompt you'd like to present. If you're having trouble choosing a prompt, you must be a really indecisive person. This is the easy part. I don't know, man. Like, my hardest one seemed maybe like the easiest one. I don't know. Oh, time is ticking. Hurry, hurry. Indiana Jones was supposed to be easy. When you run out of time, I pick your prompt for you. Sentence time. <coughs> Don't worry too much. This is your starter sentence. Soon, we'll move on to the main course. Okay, you'll be our first presenter. Baby. The category is thing. Nah, baby. It's a colorful game. Let's get the presentation started. Twister. Sorry. You know. Uno. It is composed of the commerce. Sexually no. <laughs> Sexually no. <laughs> Lego. Monopoly. Life. Yes. It's nothing like Twister, sexual you know, and life. Candy vibe. Talk about industrial sexual strategic. You know. I want to marry that sentence, but no kids. Blackjack. Battleship. <laughs> Risk. Soccer. Risk. Chess. Checkers. Hmm. Texas hold them. It's nothing like Texas hold them. Checkers and chess. Oh, okay. time is ticking. Hurry, hurry. Got me. It has the item outpost. Oregon Trail. Type fast. We're down to the wire. Zelda. Minecraft. Yep. Diggity dog on it. Ouch. Rough start to the game. A hard we one. all got the next one. What the fuck? Jesus if Christ. If at first you don't yeah. succeed, you end yeah, up where no, we sorry. are now. Alright. I mean. It's really hard was... if you don't get the right words to describe something with, you know? You should have picked anything with person. that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, those Jesus were really bad, so. <laughs> They're a real person. Holy shit. Here we go. Oof. Jesus. Carrie. Marco Polo. Obama. Oh my God. Osama. Mike. Mike. Mike Mason. They are the celebrity. Not Jesus level. <laughs> 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 They're kind of similar to Obama. Mike Masson, Kim Kardashian, Jay Z, Jack Black. Ah, what? Oh, so Will got Smith it. is kind of similar to Obama, huh? What do you mean by that, Mike? Holy I mean, he's more cow. similar to Are Obama than he to is to Paris Hilton. Me? It worked. <laughs> 
Oh, Carrie, you even in on this too. I see why you're defending it. You're guessing a person. Ooh, (laughs) tricky. It could be anyone. (laughs) They're a departed somebody. All right. Off you go. Ghost. What? My boy! Who did that? Who did that? Who got that? Bam! Baby, my (laughs) guy! <laughs> you can't well, see yeah. me right now, but I'm giving you two thumbs up. I and swear we didn't cheat, dogs. Sarong. I swear. I mean, like... the category is story. Patrick Swayze was the next. <laughs> Good job, baby. That was it's awesome. a story about a colorful object. Here we that go. was supposedly the hard one. I was like, nope, nope, nope. This one's gonna go quick. Ruby <laughs> Cube. Damn. Rainbow object. connection. Okay. Wizard of Oz. Prism. And a vibrant curiosity. Hmm. It's nothing like Wizard of Oz, Rubik Cube, and Hobbit. Harry Potter. Alison in Wonderland. <laughs> Wool. An illustrated textile. We can all agree, we loved that sentence. Parchment. Scroll. It's a different genre than Harry Potter. Timer stops for no one. Get those guesses in. Great. The hero is the book. Cyclops. Time is almost up. Bible. Superman. Josephine. is That's success hard. will never change you the category is person they're a tall figure and so it begins gold shack abraham lincoln Yamin. Ebel. they dunk the leader have a psychic on our hands. You can't see me right now, but I'm beaming with pride, and I look gorgeous. (laughs) Okay, it's finally your turn. It's story time. It's a story about a fantastic event individual. Here we go! Aliens. Jess. Obama. Jesus. Little Mermaid. X-Men. And an amazing thriller. The Man. The Queen. Michael Jackson. Lucifer Lowell. Harry Potter. Taken. Lord of the Rings. It's a different genre than Jess, Obama, and Jesus. Whoa. A fearful holiday. Oh, what a tasty sentence. Star Trek. 
fantastic beasts Dracula. and where to find Michael them. Michael Myers. Screen. Groundhog Day. Well, like Halloween is isn't a person. What the fuck are they talking about? That's what's fucked Time up. Time to check in on the scores. How's that Fun an event fact, individual? If you all the ones upside Halloween down, is not an individual. Really what the fuck? It's hard with the prompts they give yeah, you. I'm not playing this. Do, do, but whatever. Do. I mean. Round two. <laughs> because this is round two, I'm doubling the points. Here we go again. Hmm. Pick a beautiful new prompt. Pick something you know about. Something you'll be able to describe. Write a sentence to describe your new prompt. Once again, you're up. The what is aware? You're guessing a place. It's a vibrant region landscape. Time to begin. Mountains. Hawaii. Australia. Canada. China. South America. Australia. It's where you encounter the specimen. India. Beach. United States. California. Rocky Mountains. Egypt. Brazil. Galapagos Islands. Amazon. It's kind of similar to Hawaii and Australia. So much carcass. What a Island. sweet little sentence. Philippines. Bahamas. So carcass. New Zealand. New Zealand. New Zealand. Fossils. It has the same vibe as Ireland. Japan. Alaska. Bahamas. One tenmo. This place has a mini reptile. Bermuda. Time is running out. Time to take some big swings. Oh, it's kind of similar to Bahamas and Bermuda. Only a few seconds left. Oh. Oof. Total failure. No problem. That's a hard the one. party goes on. The category is person. Perfect. I happen to be a person myself. They're an eternal individual. Off you go. Himself. They are the hero. Jesus. God. Jesus. Satan. God Ooh. damn. Okay, right. Usain Bolt. You're fast. Nice. We got it. Yeah, my man. Thank you, dog. <laughs> you did this. Just like that. I'm so proud of you for doing the words game. like that and making the sentences so good. Guess what? Literally, guess what? Because you're guessing a thing. It's a horrible wet oh dilemma. God. And we're off. Oh, Lord. <laughs> mm. 
Wet dilemma, eh? Mm. Blood. He pollutes the plastic. Mm. Interesting. Girls. Moist. Ocean. Acid. Ocean. But tape deck, not uh, uh. It's found in the same place as ocean. Condom. Mm. Plastic reef. <laughs> Sand. Talk about expansive. Congratulations, you successfully wrote a sentence. It's a lot like garbage patch. Off the disk. Hmm. Water. It is composed of the mass. So how do we. Oil patch. the real name of it then? Oil spill. Bottle. There you <laughs> go. Good job. Had to nail it down to specifics. Apparently, yeah, because, like, uh, damn. Frame it, put it in a museum. <laughs> no. Yeah, my baby. The category <laughs> is person. They're a suave beast. And so it begins. Mike. <laughs> Good. Good. Obama. Bob Ross. Mike. <laughs> they are known for the movie. Werewolf. Vampire. The Hulk. Centaur. Elf. Nick Cage. Goblin. Harry Potter. Wolverine. Hagrid. Giant. The presenter needs to do something. Gremlins. Daniel Craig. <laughs> They're nothing like Bob Ross. Freaking cage dude. <laughs> Monsters Incorporated. Indiana Jones. They're so zesty fictional. That sentence is full of syntax. P.S. Brosnan. Time is running out. Submit more guesses. OA7. James Bond. Zorro. James Bond. James Bond. They're in the same genre as Monsters Incorporated. Guy Fieri. Oh, time is ticking. Hurry, hurry. Incredibles. Mm. Oh, fooey. No one got it. I don't know about that. That one's tough, yeah. yeah. The category is place. It's a horrible region place. Time to begin. Antarctica. Midwest. Alberta. It's where you travel for the commuting human. My bags. Suburbia. It's nothing like Antarctica and desert. New York. Highway. Detroit. Bus station. La Guardia. Trailer. Canada. Train station. San Francisco. New York. China. Nice job, baby. <laughs> That's pretty cold-blooded in New Jersey, though. 
It was this round is just like my New skate. Jersey. Well done. And slathered in Alfredo. It's a horrible region. region place. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you could probably get banned from Torch Talk. This is the this last kind of turn. Thing. You got this. <laughs> the category is thing. It's a tiny object. Here we go. Lemon. It is the music. Pickle. Lemon. Lime. Skittles. What? Warhead. Jazz. It's nothing like jazz. Flute. Talk about dueling. What a sweet little. Someone got it. Yes. They gave me dueling. That was that was key. This game is <laughs> over. No, it's fine. <laughs> Here's the part. Banjo was the easy like. choice. The scoreboard. And check it for a reason. The Grandmaster final big winner person is... Nice job, acquaintance. What? Thanks Good for job, playing. Good job, baby. You won the last game. Come back whenever My, you feel you. a blather stirring in your soul. That was so much fun. I'm so impressed that everybody is still here at like 2... In the morning. Yep, I am as well. I think we're gonna wrap so it up there. People. Yep, my dogs. Uh, much love. I hope you all enjoyed the the demo. I mean, I've been like seriously going crazy editing this thing and knocking it all out and all that. So, I hope you all enjoyed. Um, and and man, I hope you all had fun playing games. My, nothing but love. I really appreciate you guys. I'm just going to send you off to Carrie for a uh, hopefully more eloquent goodnight because I'm over here ducked in the corner just like. Yeah, Mike's like, what up, Dallas? I'm going to say goodnight from over here. <laughs> <laughs> I love y'all, homies. Oh, I seriously, I really appreciate y'all. Thanks so much for tuning in and making this a cool <laughs> thing and I, uh, everything. Y'all are the best. Send you off to Carrie. Good night, dogs. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you so much, Mike, for doing that demo and filming it so quickly and editing it up to the last minute, getting all that you know that good stuff together for us, and I hosting I, game night and everything. I'm responsible yeah. and had it done much sooner than that. What are you talking about? I'm. I mean, I can only assume based. I mean, no, I'm just kidding. Just, That's how that is. What it yeah. is, y'all. We, we're... <laughs> <laughs> Girl. Anyway, thank you everybody for being here. It's because <laughs> of you all being here that we get to all do this. So thanks for being part of the party. Thanks for playing games. I love playing games. And uh yeah. Fuck yeah. Happy Much New love, Year Horse Talk 2022. <laughs> Goddamn right. Much love, dogs. Peace. <laughs> All right, we're out. I think we're actually 